Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips. We all like to relax after a day's work. Some like to stare at the goggle box. Some like to glue their fingers together and wreck the dining room table making model aeroplanes. Personally, I like holding knitting wool for my wife to wind. She tells me. The Navy, of course, they like to pop into the local for a quick one. And so would I if I didn't have to hold that flaming wool. <laughs> Let's have a little service here, please. <laughs> Over here with the old pint pot sink. Oi! Wallop flogger. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What's all the noise, Chief? Well, funnily enough, Pertwee came into this pub for a drink. And up to now, he hasn't had so much as a wet crisp. <laughs> well, what do you want, then? What are you buying? Yeah, you cheapskate. I'll have half of my old. For cash? For cash. <laughs> oh, you are polite. You go on, don't you? <laughs> of course it's for cash. Eventually. Good evening. You come back. Chief? Not guilty. Oh, hello, sir. Hello. Well, well, well. Number one, so I didn't see you standing behind me. Odd. I was under the impression that you had eyes in the back of your head. What are you having? Uh, me, sir? Oh, well, that's uh, Arlie Generostabilostical of you, all the <laughs> Well, not altogether. I happen to want a drink myself, and having heard all the previous bargaining going on, I think I'll get a noggin quicker if I pay for yours as well. Oh, well, in that case, sir, I'll, uh, I'll join you in a large run, <laughs> You won't, you know. You'll join me in a half a mile. Uh, excuse me, gents, but is somebody going to order something? Oh, yes. Uh, I'll have a gin and tonic, and this gentleman will have a half of... Oh, all right. There's no need to look at me like that, Chief. A small rum for this gentleman. <laughs> and uh, a lemon shandy. And a what? A lemon sh... Oh, I didn't know Mr. Phillips was here as well, sir. <laughs> mm? Oh, yes, he's, he's over there playing dart. Oh! Oh! oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm most terribly sorry, madam. I was aiming for double top. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Phillips, over here. A writer. Mind your leg. I say, I'm most terribly sorry. Yeah. Yes, how were you, Mr. Phillips, sir? Oh, your drink, sir. I trust the shandy is for Robin Hood, you <laughs> As a matter of fact, it is. Why? Well, no disrespect, sir, but if you intend to drink anything stronger and play darts, I'm turning my license in your now. Honestly, you're just looking for something to complain about. No, I'm not, sir. I've got something. Nobody's paid for these drinks. <coughs> All right, Chief. No need to choke yourself. I'm going to pay. Uh, can you change a note? Well, that depends, sir. I'll have to have a look at it first. We've been getting a lot of dud notes lately. Cool. Well, there's a liberty. The nerve of some people. Well, gracious, I shouldn't have expected you to get so righteous about somebody passing dud notes, Chief. Well, well no, it's not that serious. The idea is someone working a fiddle in Pertwee's territory. <laughs> Sean, keep you a minute for your change, sir. Uh, that's all right, my man. Chief, I know this may be Pertwee territory, but we won't forget that it's my change, will we? <laughs> yeah, I say, Phillips, old boy, if you're not going to finish the game, can we have our dart back? Oh, sorry, Major. I, I don't think you've met Lieutenant uh, Murray, our number one. Uh, this is Major Pycrust. <laughs> Pie craft, actually, old boy. <laughs> late Indian rifle. Oh, well, better late than never, I suppose. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, sorry, pardon. Quite so. Uh, and, and this is Chief Pertwee Officer Petty. <laughs> I mean, pretty Officer Shirty. <laughs> um, what? What? What was that again? 
Oh, it's uh, very nice of you, I'm sure, sir. It was a small run, but in this one, <laughs> I think I'll have a large uh, The one. name was Pertwee, Major. Mm. Yes, Major. If you want to work a fiddle, this is his territory. Mr. Phillips. Well, cheer up, Phillips, old man. At least you're still in the service. A constant source of mystery to us all. <laughs> no, no, what I'm getting at is that is this retirement drill is just not on. Take it from me, old boy. Mm. Miss the chaps in the mess, you know. And the jolly old pension doesn't go far these days. No, I suppose not. Phillips here was telling me you chaps are off on some NATO exercise tomorrow. Splendid stuff. Uh, have another drink. Oh, you? no, sir, we couldn't possibly. Uh, very nice of you, I'm sure, sir. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a small run, but in this <laughs> weather, a large run. Oh, no, no, that's all right. It thumping well isn't. I just remembered something. Chief. Sir? Where's my change from the last round? George? <laughs> well, well, there's a thing, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Uh, same again, please, landlord. Very good, sir. You know, I envy you chaps. It really is the most extraordinary coincidence. Oh, uh, what's that? What about us going to Norway tomorrow, sir? You see, the Major's old Batman married a Norwegian girl, and um, he lives over there. Yes, had a letter from him only this week. Poor chap's pretty groggy, though. Keeps asking for me, but on my pension. Well, there's no hope of my going there, I'm afraid. Your drinks, gents. Oh, good man. Uh, here you are. Keep a change. Uh, have one yourself. Oh, thanks very much, sir. Of course, I, I suppose we couldn't take the major, huh, sir? What? Oh, no, 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 no. I wouldn't dream of it, old boy. Well, I don't see why we shouldn't, sir. I mean, he did buy us a drink. <laughs> much as I'd like to be able to return the compliment, I don't seem to have got my wallet with me. Oh, no, no. <laughs> forget it, old man, forget it. He probably already has. <laughs> Still, I don't see that giving you a lift can do any real harm. If you want to come, Major, you have to come aboard tonight. I see that's jolly good of you. I can't tell you how much I'd like to see poor old Ted again before he goes. Well, that's settled then. Glad to have you with us. Oh, uh, Mr. Phillips. Yes, sir, sir. Mm? Knowing what a happy little chatterbox you are, don't bother to tell Captain Povey we're taking a passenger, will you? No, oh, certainly not, sir. I wouldn't dream of telling old Thundergast anything about the <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you dream of telling me about? Um, it is old Thundergast. <laughs> it is indeed. Now do go on, Mr. Phillips. Oh, um, we were just talking about taking the... Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 about taking the, uh, the the shortest route to Norway. I see. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> yes, well, do it. And after that, kindly also take the shortest route to Hamburg and then the shortest route back here to Portsmouth. Oh, you can rely on us, sir. Are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> However, we quite understand, sir. We were just leaving anyway. I? Uh, were we? Oh, what a shame, sir. Just as I was about to buy everyone a drink. <laughs> yes, well, good night. Good night, Captain Povey. Good night. 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 Good evening, Captain Povey. Popped in for a crafty one again, eh? Oh, yes, yes. Make it the usual, Sydney. Quick, and um, can you change a fiver? Of course. Now, there's your wallop and your cashew tablets. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> and here's your change. Five and five is ten bob. There's a pound. And one, two... Hello, hello, what's this, perisher? Blimey, I've got a flaming dud one again. Gee, well, don't give it to me, for pity's sake, or the wife will dock it out of my pocket money for a month. Now then, <laughs> who swung that one on me? Oh, I'm going to ring the rosas. Someone round here is flooding the place with a blooming thing. <laughs> Wonderful stuff, this this Norwegian air, isn't it? Uh, hmm. I believe the Norwegians never use anything else. But <laughs> 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 well, I wish they'd warm it up a bit for visitors. Hurt me's nose and toes is fruits. <laughs> Yes, uh, certainly is a nip in the air. <clears throat> Let's pop into this cafe place for a coffee and a warm. But we don't speak the language, sir. Oh, I'm sure you manage splendidly. Let's face it, you get in a shocking mess with English. But then you're... <laughs> yeah, well, if the worst comes to the worst, sir, I can always try the old sign language. D don't you dare. <laughs> we don't want to get arrested. <laughs> no, it's all right. I I've got my phrase book. Oh, oh good. I say, what about that waitress over there for a bit of local colour? Eh? <laughs> Does your book give the Norwegian for um, 
Cool. <laughs> no, it does not. Good morgen. Oh, very likely. Mm. <laughs> Perhaps it will. Mm. Uh, uh, who cares? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Shall I put the lead on him whilst you look up the phrase? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you better. Uh, now then, uh, <clears throat> uh, for Air uh, Big Gravels Bureau, <laughs> in Ven Han and Skirk Hooster. He is down the street, but both your friends look all right to me, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, pardon? You have just said, where is the undertaker? <laughs> My chum has a nasty cough. <laughs> I thought I said, we understand we come here and have a tasty coffee. Lummy, it might have been safer with Pertwee's sign language. <laughs> you want coffee, yeah? Oh, yather. <laughs> I, I mean, rather, w with two yumps. Mm. Uh, uh, lumps, please. Uh, I say, as you speak English, I suppose you, you wouldn't like to show me around uh, later, would you? I think maybe you have already been around nine. Yeah, I was thinking around about eight, actually. <laughs> Put the lead on again, Chief, or we'll never get that coffee. If you want appointment with me, I think you also need appointment with Undertaker. My husband is Big Sven, the all-in wrestler. Is he? Oh. <laughs> Grand sport. Hmm. Yes, I think I'll just have a coffee now, please. I fetch straight away. My word, there's a bit of luck. I was hoping you chaps hadn't gone. Yeah, if Big Sven had been here, I would have done. Straight through that spindle. <laughs> uh, hello, Major. Uh, how's that Batman of yours? Uh, have you seen him yet? No, old boy, no. Shocking bad luck. Complications set in, apparently. He's been moved to Hamburg. Pity I missed him, though. He's still asking for me, you know. Very touching, that's it. Yeah, and it must have been an honour for him to have served under a... Gallant gentlemen like yourselves. You know, we, we lower ranks know only too well that such officers don't pass our way all that often. <laughs> but when we find one, a true blue gent, who remembers the selfless devotion to duty of the humble men. All right, oh, all right, way. Chief. Relax, I'll pay for your coffee. <laughs> Oh, very, very kind, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, I know I am, but I can't stand any more of that up the workers bit. <laughs> I say, sir, as we brought the Major here, why don't we take him to Hamburg? I mean, we're, we're due there next anyway. Excuse, please, your coffee, yeah? Oh, oh thanks so much. Uh, how much will that... Oh, no, 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 my dear chap, allow me. Here you are, miss. Oh, thank you. Oh, what a whopping note. Mm, keep a change. Won't you have a cup, sir? No, 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 no. I've got to see if I can either get back to England or hitchhike to Hamburg somehow. Well, that's what I was saying just now, you see. Why don't we take the Major with us, sir? Yes, of course. We'd be delighted to have you with us again, sir. Well, I call that dashed civil of you. When do you sail? Uh, on the tide, sir, which is in about... Uh, oh, good gracious, look at the time. However long have we been gawping at the sights? Just tell me, if we're not careful, we'll miss the tide tomorrow as well as today. Come along, Mr. Phillips. Uh, right, I'll just finish my... Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, my tongue, though. Well, never mind your tongue. Leave it in the saucer. Um, come on. <laughs> Off you, Major. What about the Norwegian for taxi? Excuse, please. Could I have a... Oh, they are all gone. Sven! Big Sven! Yeah, Gerta. <laughs> We have ourselves a counterfeit note nine. Yeah, we have a whopping one. Oh! You know, sir, I'm not at all sure the mater would approve of my being in a club like this. Oh, come now. Leslie's a big boy now. 
Yes. When in Hamburg, do as the hamburgers do. <laughs> yes, that's all very well, but um, I've read about places like this, and they're, well, naughty. <laughs> I imagine it's about cabaret time now. Well, what is the cabaret anyway, sir? Um, hang on, it's on the menu here. Now, uh... Oh, oh, the, the, this ought to be good. Oh, yeah, well, what's it say, sir? Well, roughly, the Fräulein Brunhilde mit her balloons will do ein speciality dance portraying ein Britisher drum major. Stone me. <laughs> well, what's the matter with that? I suppose it's some sort of marching exhibition. It's funny, though, I, I wonder what she wants balloons for. I think you're about to find out. Meine Damen und Herren, the Cabaret! Und hier ist die Schöne, die Hübsche, die Fantastische Fräulein von Hilde! Here she comes. Cool. <laughs> Lummy. <laughs> so that's what she wanted balloons for. There are dozens of them all over her. Yeah, I have a sneaking suspicion they won't be there for long. Well, if they are, Pert, we want his money back. <laughs> I must say, I find the Busby and the drum major's mace a bit incongruous, don't you? <laughs> Frankly, I hadn't noticed them, sir. Oh, what a shame. One of her balloons has burst. And another one. And another, sir. I say, that's a pretty poor do, isn't it, sir? What is? Well, they've obviously given the poor girl inferior balloons. <laughs> they keep going off bang. Yes, they do, don't they? Patience, Chief. Patience. Yes. Do sit down, Patience. I say, sir, this is getting jolly serious. What is? Well, you, you may not have noticed, sir, but her balloons keep bursting. <laughs> and for a moment, I, I, I got a nasty feeling she'd forgotten to put the rest of the British drum major's uniform on. <laughs> Lummy, she has. Keep going, gal. Only a few more to go. Will, will you stop that, Chief? Yeah, I will, sir, as long as she don't. Keep going. Ah, that's certain. I saw that. Do you, do you know, sir, it's her own fault. Jolly careless of her. What is? Well, her fingernails are too long, sir. <laughs> that's, that's what keeps puncturing them. I, I, ah, sir, I say, she's being a fool to herself, you know. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, be quiet. The balloon bursting seems to have slowed up. Yeah, I've noticed, sir. The suspense is murder. It's a good thing, too. She's only got four left. That's it! Only three to go! Bang, bang, bang! Keep going, Gil! Oh, no! What a swindle! Look, it's all over. We've been robbed. It's a fiddle! Who's got a pin? Here! Three cents! Hurry up, lads! Pop, pop, pop! Before she goes! Sit down, Pertwee. You get us chucked out. Yes, Chief. Chief, leave that poor girl alone. After all, she's had a jolly unnerving experience. Yeah, so have we. <laughs> well, what happens now, sir? Um, oh, back to their dancing mitt partners, I gather. I? Oh, no, not again. Of course, still in the cribs. Don't they know any other two? Oh, isn't that odd? I like it. Uh, you would, you dear old-fashioned thing. Come on, out. We're leaving. Enough is enough. But well, couldn't we just wait until after this tune, sir? It's jolly catchy. Yeah, very likely, Mr. Phillips, sir, but if you haven't caught it by now, you never will. They've played the Perisher 84 times already. Well, I'll get the bill. Oh, well, that's going to be a bit tricky. So happens I've left all my All right, wallet. all right, I'll pay. It's worth it to get away from this band. Well, 
well, well, well, well. <laughs> Fancy bumping into you chaps again. What? Well, Lummy, it's the Major. Everything okay now, sir? No, I'm afraid not, old boy. Most extraordinary thing. I got here just too late. My Batman's hat is off and the war office wallows have moved him to Millbank, back in Blighty. Well, we're sailing in a few hours for Portsmouth, so you may as well come along and make it the round trip. Are you really? Oh, no, I can't possibly expect you to... Uh... Excuse me, gentlemen. Your bill, please. What? what? Oh, no, 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 no. Give that to me. I'll settle that. Here you are. I hope you chaps enjoyed yourselves. Uh, what was the cabaret like? What? No, it went off with a bang. <laughs> yeah, but not enough of them. <laughs> Stop harping, chief. Well, what? you must certainly allow us to transport you back to England. Well, that's jolly civil of you, I must say. Chaps grateful. I'd like to see old Charlie again. Charlie? I thought you said his name was Ted. Oh, yes, yes, it is. Yes, I, I just always think of him as a Charlie. Uh, <laughs> shall we go then, old boy? Yeah, by all means. Come on, you two. We'd better get back to the ship. I'm coming, sir. I'm coming. Fritz, Fritz, quick. Phone the police. Right turn now for the books this is. We have an counterfeit note gotten. Get the police, meet the whistles, and the handcuff, and the magnifying glass. Come in. Commander Bracewell for intelligence is here to see you, Captain Povey. Bracewell? Here? I've never known the fool to leave his own office before. Well, you have this time, Povey, old man. What? Oh, mm -hmm. I, did, I he didn't mean that. <laughs> that is, I was talking about... Uh, That's the style. Uh, <laughs> flap, flap, flap. What? <laughs> now, wait until you hear about the monumental panic going on in my department. Scotland Yard, Interpol, the Army, the Air Force, everybody's in it. Except May Gray. <laughs> except who? Oh, I was forgetting. Mrs. Povey doesn't let you watch the telly, does she? A hard nut, that one. Commander Bracewell, what is all this panic that you seem to be enjoying so much? What's happened? Well, it all started with an absolutely colossal amount of slush turning up all over the place. A colossal amount of what? Slush, old man. Counterfeit money. A load turned up here, then another lot in Norway, and then some more in Hamburg. Norway? And then... Hamburg? But, but that's where this NATO exercise has been going on. Ten out of ten, Povey. Huh. We tumbled that one. The yard nabbed the blighters who'd been printing the muck, but missed the chappy who was circulating it. This chap must have catched a lift on a naval vessel. Stands to reason. Oh, oh yes, yes. I suppose it... Oh, no. No, he can't be. No. He isn't aboard Troutbridge. Afraid so. The yard chappies know him. Called himself a major, usually... What do you want me to do? Well, someone's got to warn those chaps on Troutbridge. You mean send a signal? Not likely. Uh, too dangerous. He might hear of it, and we don't know if he's armed. Unfortunately, we've already sent out one signal warning all ships that he was believed to be aboard a naval craft. Then what can we do? Well, here's the form. <clears throat> Troutbridge is due back here tonight, isn't she? <clears throat> Splendid. As soon as she's sighted, we want someone to go out and meet her in a launch. Get aboard and warn the crew. Very well, I'll see who I can send. No, oh, you won't, you know. <laughs> we want you to go. Me? But go on board, but, but he, he, he may be armed. No, 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 no. I, I as a married man, I, I can't possibly... It's a job for a younger man. Well, suit yourself, but I understand that there might very well be a medal in it. A medal? Oh, really? A medal? Oh, well, I, I hope I know my duty. <laughs> I shall go myself, of course. <laughs> Thought you would. Oh, you'd better go in civvies. He might spot you getting aboard, and we can't afford to arouse his suspicion. Oh, no, we certainly can't. I, uh, I shall go in disguise. Yeah, it's the spirit. Best of luck, Povey, old man, and hope you don't get that medal posthumously, Povey. <laughs> Toodly bye. <laughs> Soon be back in Pompey now, sir. Uh, bridge, number one here. Starboard, look out here, sir. You know that signal about some crook being aboard a naval craft, sir? Yeah, what about it? Well, I think we've got him. Captain Povey's launch is approaching, but he's not in it. I reckon it's been knocked off. Knocked off? <laughs> Why, who is in it? Well, an odd sort of cool, sir. Very suspicious, if you ask me. Got a shocking old suit on and a great big black beard. Good <laughs> gracious! Uh, we must nab him. Oh, suit yourself, sir. Oh, but while we're talking about my promotion, sir, I don't want to be difficult. Good. Uh, 
Quick, Chief. <laughs> Someone's knocked off Thundergut's launch. It may be that counterfeit bond. Get that launch stopped and bring the man aboard. Any trouble from him, bang him straight in the cells. We'll have him sorted out when we dock. Oh, I said. <laughs> Easy, easy. Steady at that. Steady at that, sir. Stop engines. Stop engines, yes, sir. And I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. What? We've actually docked without hitting anything. <laughs> yeah, when old Thundercats hears about this, and that we've got old Blackbeard in the cells, he'll probably faint. Hello, you chaps. Home sweet home, eh? You won't mind if I nip off a bit sharply, will you? Uh, want to get to old Harry's bedside as soon as possible? Hang on. Uh, uh, just a tick, Major. Uh, someone's coming aboard. Oh, he looks like Commander Bracewell, and there's a, a civvy bloke with him. What? Here, out of my way. Uh, out of my way, blast you! Hold him, chaps! He wanted... Let go of me, will you? Hold him, Chief! I've got him set! Oh, I can't think why. <laughs> well done, well done. This gentleman will take over now. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Commander Bracewell. Now then, Major Pycroft, or whatever it is you're calling yourself this time, I'm a police officer, and I'm taking you to the station for questioning. Questioning, officer? What about? It's concerning the uttering of forged notes, sir. This way, please. But you've got the wrong one. The chap you want is in the cells. Bloke with a big black beard and tatty suit. Who <laughs> else? Well, I don't know who you've got. This is our man, all right. Well, I'll just have a look in that Atasha case of yours, if you don't mind, Major. Tell me, look at that. The Bank of England. <laughs> Hardly that, sir. Lummy, that proves it. So, who did we cop in Captain Povey's launch? Well, at a rough guess, I'd say Captain Povey. <laughs> Good gracious. Thunderguts? I don't think I feel very well. <laughs> well, uh, good night, all. Uh, one moment, Chief Petty Officer. I'll take charge of that suitcase now, thank you. <laughs> suitcase? What's he talking about, suit? <laughs> <laughs> this suitcase, yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I was just sort of minding it, you know. They're very likely, sir. So am I. Minding it doesn't vanish. <laughs> this way, Major. Well, now all that remains is which one of us is going to let old Thunderguts out of the cells. Oh, I think you should, sir. <laughs> yeah, don't look at me, number one. Sir. Well, someone's got to. Well, it's not me. Well, I'm not, I'm not in the mood, you know. I'm yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Jake's Hold it. Look, I know the very lad who loved to do it. Johnson! <laughs> Johnson! Oh, of course. Johnson! <laughs> And that was Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant. Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Major Pycraft was Ronnie Barker, the Norwegian waitress was Heather Chasen, Commander Bracewell was Michael Bates, and the police inspector was Tenya Evans. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips, and Stephen Murray. <laughs> Nothing does a chap so much good as an evening out with the boys. It does him even more good if the boys are paying for it. Unfortunately, when I'm out with them, I usually find the boys have all mislaid their wallets, they've left their money in their other suits, or well, they all swear blind they thought the party was on me anyway. Needless to say, Troutbridge has at least one of that sort. Come on, out we get. We're here. Dockyard gates, all changed. Well, how can we get out with you stuck in the doorway, fatso? <laughs> Oh, so my ginger in the back seat. My head's going round and so on my feet. <laughs> oh, pardon. 
Wilted, are you going to tip him out of my cab or am I? No, thanks. Don't bother, Ginger. Come on out with that blooming cab. Now then, how much on the clock, my man? Seven and ninepence. Taffy, it's seven and... Taffy? Taffy, where you going? <laughs> well, he always goes when it's time to pay for something. And don't bother to tell me how much it is. I'm skint. Uh, you're rotten, that's what you are. You're a rotten pair of rottens who are rotten. <laughs> seven and ninepence, you said, my man? That's right. Here you are, then. Eight bob. Keep the change. Yeah. What, all of it? <laughs> Has he gone? Yeah, and I've paid so you can come out now, miser. I'll have you know that I can be as generous as the next man when I've got it. And I'll have you know, I've never known you to have it since I've known you. <laughs> now, there's no need for you two to take the mickey. Well... I'd be only too happy to pay if number one had given me the promotion he promised me when we were in Onabushka. Well, I wish he'd hurry up and give it you then. Well, I keep sort of dropping it into the conversation whenever I see him, but all he says is that he's thinking about it. You can't go around spending his thinks. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but here, Taffy, why don't you see number one about it on request men and defaulters tomorrow? That's just what I am going to do. Good. I'll be there to keep you company. I'm on defaulters again. <laughs> I'm taking the cam back for the chief, as usual. Number one inspected the stores this morning, and we were three blankets short. Is that all? No, but that's all he spotted. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be all right, though. The chief's going to get me off. He promised. He said if I told him I'd lost the blankets, he'd get me off. Oh, 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 there's one born every minute. Oh, I'm glad I'm going to be on that parade tomorrow. I want to see your face when you realise you've fallen for it again. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but whilst you hold requestmen defaulters, would you mind if I sat in? Sat in what, Mr. Phillips? <laughs> oh, any old chair that... Oh. <laughs> yeah, very funny. <laughs> I, I just feel that if, if a chap's an officer, then a chap should know about these things. I've been reading it all up in this book of Queen's Regulations. I take it somebody else had already borrowed Noddy Rides again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come in. Uh, requestman and the fault is present, sir. Splendid. So are we. You better wheel the first requestman in, Chief. Uh, with due respect, sir, uh, there's only one, and that's Abel Seaman Goldstein, sir, about his advancement, sir. Yes, well, in that case, we'd better see the defaulters first. Oh, sir, uh, there's only one of those this morning, is it? Johnson, I presume. Yes, sir. That's correct, sir. Are you, uh, are you still proceeding with the charge? Well, I inspected the stores again this morning, as you requested, Chief, and I admit the blankets are all there now, but I think we'll have a word with Fatso first. Aye, aye, sir. Right, and Fatso, remember what I told you, and you're in the clear. How oh, I got lumbered for this, I'll never know. I'm not happy. I'm not, you know. I'm not happy. <laughs> no. Well, it's just as well. You go in there laughing all over your chops and you'll go straight in the rattle. <laughs> I probably will anyway. Don't argue. Ouch! Oh, cats! Blimey, jolly unnerving, that. <laughs> what? Oh, seeing all that weight charge straight at you, sir. <laughs> I never thought he'd pull up in time. Well, neither did I. Neither did I. <laughs> remember where you are, Johnson. Just that, remember that. Remember where you are. I will say with Johnson, sir. Charged that he did mislay or remove the Admiralty property, sir, as listed. Blankets woolen, three regions is you, sir. Yes, all right. Um, <laughs> just a minute. Now then, Johnson, you'll recall that when I inspected the stores yesterday, the chief proved beyond all shadow of a doubt, as far as he was concerned, and entirely to his own satisfaction, that you must have been in sole charge of these blankets when they disappeared. Yes, I remember that very clearly. I had my mouth open at the time, sir. <laughs> yes, I noticed. However, at the chief's request, I inspected stores again this morning, and the blankets are now correct. Oh, well, there we are then, Not right. so fast, Chief. 
<laughs> I, um, I also inspected Abel Seaman Johnson's bunk this morning, and I found there were none of his blankets to be seen. <laughs> hey, Fatso's blankets gone of all the thieving... No wonder I was going to be in the clear. Me bones will be frozen to the cauliflower. <laughs> No, they won't, Johnson. I have a pretty fair idea of what's been going on, so I intend to dismiss the charge. Oh, thank you, sir. And whilst you're here, Chief, I thought you might care to make a small donation of, say, three pounds to the ship's comfort fund. Three quid? <laughs> <laughs> three quid? What, what, from me? Accepted, Chief. Very generous of you. <laughs> now, as treasurer of the fund, I award three pounds to Johnson for the purpose of supplying himself with, um, additional blankets. Dismiss. <laughs> right, shot, ten. Right, shot, ten. On, cat, a bell, tail, kink, punch, a lift, a lift, a lift, a lift, a lift, a lift, a lift. <laughs> Next. Goldstein! Goldstein! Quay! Punch! Pick rock, dip 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 Prisoner's friend? He's not a prisoner. Yet. <laughs> well, as the requestman's mate, then, sir, according to my book here, it definitely states that the rating of the first part, who is not necessarily of the second part, is entitled to state in the first part, here and after, referred to as the statement in the second part, which doesn't, doesn't prohibit the sailor of, of the first part. Um, or the, uh, or the second hand. Uh, the, the part of, of a sailor in, in, uh, in the third watch uh, could watch the sailor with his first part. Uh, who, uh, who parted with his watch to the sailor of the third. Um, and that is uh, if the, um, the defence rests. Yes, just as well. Or the officer of the first part would have booted the officer of the second part smartly in the third part. <laughs> mm, with due respect, sir, could the requestman of the first part have a word in the second place, sir? Oh, uh, very well. What is it, Goldstein? It's about my advancement, sir. There was a certain sort of gentleman's agreement, sir, when we were on Onabushka, that Abel Seaman Goldstein was going to be leading Seaman Goldstein. And up to now, Abel Seaman Goldstein is still Abel Seaman Goldstein. Sir. Now, I've told you before, Goldstein, the matter is under my constant consideration. You have indeed, sir, but I was hoping by now you might have done with considering, sir. Otherwise, starboard look out may not see certain things that are there and might see certain things that aren't. <laughs> sir. You know, he's got a case, sir. As, as the sailor of the first part, who's to be the leading seaman of the second part? Yes, he most definitely is entitled to have a third part. Mr. Uh, Phillips, I do wish you'd nip along to the library and see if Noddy Rides Again has been returned. <laughs> the Queen's regulations aren't doing you any good at all. Um, very well, Goldstein. I'll see Captain Povey about your advancement today. Oh, thank you, sir. I was hoping you would, sir, because if you didn't, I was thinking of being back here again tomorrow, sir. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Leave it to me and I'll let you know the result in about um, a week or so. <laughs> Where are you off to? The signal's office. There's a signal coming from Admiralty, which they reckon is urgent, and, well, they haven't got a runner. Oh, well, on your marks, get set, bang. Off you go. Very funny. Next time, I'll put on my shorts. Oh, I shouldn't bother. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I mean, it's, it's, uh, they're hardly worth it. I, I, I mean, it's, uh, uh, cool. <laughs> I think you'd better go and see Captain Povey. He's waiting for you. Oh, dear. Come in. 
Uh, you wanted to see us in our short sir. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you wanted us short-circuited. Uh, I, I think I'll come back later. <laughs> you all stay right where you are. Number one, I've just had the dockyard police on the phone about one of your ratings. Oh, which one is that, sir? The fat one. Johnson. Abel Seaman Johnson. Oh, that can't be right. There aren't any dockyard policemen called Abel Seaman Johnson. I mean, how could an Abel Seaman be a dockyard? Uh, dockyard. Well, Mr. Phillips, have you caught up with us yet? Yeah, very nearly, sir. <laughs> I asked you here because I'm just as puzzled as the police are. Why, what's Patso been up to this time? Well, the police caught him trying to smuggle free blankets in through the gate. Not out. In. He insists that he bought them in Gosport at the Ebenezer Pertwee self-service war surplus supply stores. <laughs> Lummy. So that's where the first three went. Excuse uh, me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, this is absolutely cool. Ren Chasen, kindly control yourself and explain what it is that you find so amusing. Well, I've tried to, but really, I wouldn't have missed this. <laughs> Hello, well, what, um, what? Now, <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop, stop it, you two, <laughs> Well, I... <laughs> Ren Chasen, number one, Mr. Phillips, what the blazes are you all cackling about? Uh, I've no idea. Well, I have. It's this signal about Abel Seaman Goldstein's advancement. Goldstein's? Oh, they made him up. Oh, they have, and how. <laughs> They've made him into a Commodore. <laughs> what? <laughs> cool. Jackpot. <laughs> Goldstein? A Commodore? But, but this is ludicrous. But there, there, there's been some mistake. Tell Signals to have it checked at once. But I already have, sir. Twice. And they confirm promotion to Commodore to take effect immediately. But they're mad, but they've gone clean off their bungling idiotic rockers, but, but, but something's got to be done about this at once. Well, sir, I imagine the first thing will be to tell the um, Commodore Goldstein. Tell him? Oh, certainly not. Oh, no, I'm not going oh, to Oh, I think you should, sir. I mean, supposing it isn't a mistake. It might be some experiment Admiralty are trying, and if they heard that you hadn't informed the Commodore, well, then... Oh, dear, yes, yes, I, I hadn't thought of it. Yes, yes, thank you, number one, yes. Well, we'd better get aboard Trout Bridge at once and tell him. Yes, and can, can we be there when you do, sir? Why? Well, that means he'll be one rank higher than you, sir. What? And I think once that sinks in, it might get jolly exciting. <laughs> really? Honestly, what these fools will get up to next is quite beyond me. Uh, found Abel Simon Goldstein as requested, sir, and uh, he's here. Good man. Uh, ask him to come in, please. Oh, uh, sir. Mark Goldstein. Walk up there, lads. Hip, chain. Ho! Hip, ho! Hip, ho! Hip, no, 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 stop yeah, that. Stop that. No, you, you can't. You, you mustn't talk to a... To a... Uh, Rock Goldstein, 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 Goldstein. Oh! <laughs> What's wrong, sir? I think Captain Covey feels we might regret any harsh words spoken to Abel C... Uh, uh, Commodore... Uh, lady... Uh, this gentleman. Hey, harsh words. But Goldstein's the biggest layabout in the entire Chief! <laughs> Take my word for it, come out of the rain. But he is, sir. Then is the time I've heard you say it to yourself. I've heard you say that of all the lazy, good for nothing. Chief! <laughs> you just can't help some people, can you? <laughs> well, you ought to know we've never got anywhere with you either. <laughs> Will you be quiet? <laughs> Now then, Abel C... Uh, uh, Commodore... Uh, uh, my man. You've been made up to... You've been made... Oh, number one, you tell him I can't bear to. It's tell me. Well, don't say they've made him a petty officer. Well, not quite, Chief. Goldstein, you've been made... Uh, a Commodore, sir. <laughs> Made a comedy. Made a. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm. I'm a comical, sir. Ah, what are your best, sir? Ah, you're a proper card. <laughs> Go on, 
Gott, ob still low. Ha, ha, ha. It is not a joke. You have been made a Commodore with effect from now. Stone the cruise. <laughs> it's true. Yes, I wonder what you get for calling a Commodore a lazy layabout. <laughs> Will you all stop interrupting? Now, obviously this ridiculous promotion is, is some sort of a mistake. Well, I don't see that at all. Richly deserved, I'd say, and not before time, neither. Right, well, there's going to be some changes around here. And for a start, we're putting to sea at once. Oh, now, look here. Watch it. Failing to comply with an order given by a superior officer can get very nasty. <laughs> yeah, I'm not risking them putting a stop to this, so you're going to see before they get the chance. Oh, well, in that case, I'll be getting back to my oh, office. Oh, no, 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 you won't, Bovey. I want my... <laughs> I want my junior officers on board with me. You're staying here. Chief! Sir? No, no, no. No, no, you don't. You mean sir. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> Chief, we're going to stores. We are? Yes. For the time being, I want a nice fat ring painted on each of my sleeves and a bit of cardboard I can shove in me hat as a peak. Goldstein's governor from here on, see? Stand by the sail. But where are we going? Now, where do you think we're going? I've been trying to get there ever since I signed on. Swansea, of course. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, sir, but I, for one, am sick of doing day trips round Swansea Bay for our Commodore's Aunt Gwyneth... Uncle Di, Evans the Sweet Shop, Williams the Duskart, and the rest of them. I must admit, there seem to have been quite a few. A few? I reckon we, we must have given rides to every person in his hometown. And half the miners under it. Well, I find it flaming difficult to take him seriously with that great fat ring painted on his sleeve and that bit of cardboard covered in scrambled eggs stuck in his hat for a peek. <laughs> so I know what you mean, but it wouldn't be so bad if he hadn't cut the cardboard from a box of cornflakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, quite, Sam. And how, how can you keep a straight face when you look at a bloke and see that he's got free gift inside written on his head? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... That's better than the first piece he had. That proclaimed to the world that his head was the large economy size and worth double. <laughs> yeah. His head's the large economy size, all right. Heads don't come no bigger, heads don't. Look, can't Captain Povey do something, sir? Apart from sitting in the WT room, waiting for the signal to say that it's all a mistake? Hardly. <laughs> Goldstein's the superior officer, Chief. And where is our fine leader of men at the moment? He's taking Aunt Morpeth round the ship, sir, and explaining how the Royal Navy couldn't make a move without Commodore Goldstein, sir. <laughs> oh, oh, heads down. Here comes our master mariner and his aunt for the tour of the bridge. I'm delighted to hear it, sir. You're what? Delighted, sir. I think I've just had an idea that you'll put a stop to all these gadabouts on the briny for the coming old doors, Keith and Ken. In you go, Auntie. This is me bridge. Oh, there's a lovely view you've got. But they might have given you a bit of lino on the floor. <laughs> well, I'll chat the first sea lord back about that next time we have fish and chips at his club, Auntie. Oh, there's lucky you are to have such a clever Commodore as our Tuffy. I'll bet you think a lot of him. Well, we think quite a lot about him. <laughs> Careful, number one. Commodore's listening, and I've got a memory like a ledger. Now, this one here is our chief petty officer. I thought it must be proper mean-looking. <laughs> Just like you described him in your letters when you used to be put upon so disgusting-like. Oh, come on, have a heart, madam. Have an heart. I mean, give a dog a bad burn and all that sort of thing, you know? I mean, you were speaking of the days before our grand old man of the seas, our beloved Commodore Goldstein. Help me to see the error of my way. Hello, hello, hello. What's coming? I don't like the sound of this. <laughs> Work wonders. He worked wonders, the Commodore has, madam. Work wonders, yeah. You know, before his promotion, we was a disgrace to the Royal Navy. The ship, the ship was dirty and always... Making smoot and all that. But he's stopped it all. He's stopped all that now. Then I bet I know how he's done it. Our Tuffy has made sure you've only had the best Welsh coal in your boilers. 
There's nothing to touch Welsh coal for that cleanliness, you know. Oh, I think I'm with it now. You are? I'm not. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, madam. Did you say coal? Did I hear you say coal? Uh, yes, well, I, I think we'd better be moving on now, oh, Auntie. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Come out also. When you were showing your aunt in the engine room, surely you explained to her that we're oil burning. Oil burning? Uh, <laughs> that's right, madam. We burn gallons of the stuff. Jolly economical, too. Tuffy Goldstein, how dare you? Oil burning indeed. Well, it's only my fault, is it? Oh, yes, it is. You could have chatted the first tea lord back about it, couldn't you? And if he wouldn't have you converted back to coal, then you've no right as a Welshman to be lording it on this floating den of wickedness. But, Auntie, I... A traitor, that's what you are. A traitor to the land of your fathers. And not only your fathers, but your uncles and your aunties as well. No, aunt, Auntie, you don't understand. I understand, what? all right. From here onwards, Mr. Commodore, you're going to be classed as an undesirable alien. <laughs> and if you're smart, you'll use up some of that depraved oil of yours and get this lost ship from the fair land of Wales before the rest of the family hears about your Mr. Menio. Well said, madam, and this way out. Thank you. At least the rest of you can be excused from this terrible thing. You can't help being English. Auntie, will you please slow down? Not until I've shaken the oil-ridden dust of this ship off my well shoes. And don't you ever darken our pit head again, do ye, Aunt? <laughs> Funny woman. <laughs> Fancy... Fancy getting upset just because we burn oil. <laughs> you know, Pertwee, I, I don't think you should have mentioned it. She was definitely not. Let's not even try to explain why you did, Chief. It seems to have done the trick all right. I think we'd better stand by to put to sea, don't you? Oh, at last, all right, sir. And well done. Very neat. Thank you, sir. Oh. <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> You said it deliberately to get her going. Oh, <laughs> oh you're sharp at times, Mr. Phillips. Huh? Yeah, but it wasn't only to get her going, but to get us going as well. And what was that for, Mr. Phillips? Sheer joie de vivre, because you've made the open sea without hitting anything. Well, how did you guess? <laughs> Just as well. The sooner we're well away from Wales, the safer I'll feel. You can't be going any faster. Well, we might be able to, but the ship can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I reckon he saves the mottoes out of crackers every year. <laughs> I say, you chaps, I've just been getting some rather unfortunate signals. I've never known you get any other kind, Lieutenant Bates. <laughs> what are they? Well, it's just the tiniest bit tricky with the Commodore on the bridge, sir, because he isn't. Oh, yes, I am. I've been here for hours. Uh, no, I'm rather afraid you don't seem to be a Commodore at all, Taffy, old man. What? It seems that records found out they'd boobed rather badly because there are two Goldstein T's in the service. The whole mistake came to light when they found a certain Captain Thomas Goldstein had been promoted leading seaman. Stand <laughs> me! Cursed! I, I bet he went a bit puce. Oh dear, so Taffy shouldn't have been a Commodore at all. Ah, it's a shame. <laughs> it's the bloated capitalists lording it over the damn trodden pheasants, peasants as usual. <laughs> oh no, one law for the rich, one law for the starboard lookouts. Oh, do shut up. Well, Goldstein, what have you got to say about all this? Why do you think I mind, sir? I think I've had enough commodore in, really. I mean, I've been ostracised by the family. Fatso and Ginger won't speak to me. And let's face it, sir, I don't really fit in up here. Oh, nonsense. No, sir, if you don't mind, I think I'd rather turn it in now. I've had enough. It was nice while it lasted, but I, I don't want to go on. Very well, um, able seaman Goldstein. We take it you relinquish your command. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, Mr. Bates, does Captain Povey know about this yet? Uh, no, sir. As you know, he's been sitting right beside me in the WT room, waiting for this signal, but he waited so long, he finally fell asleep. Then perhaps we'd better not bother him till we get back to Portsmouth, then. What a good idea, sir. Otherwise, he'll be lording it over this floating den of wickedness all the way back. 
Blimey, we're aground. Mr. Phillips. Well, it's hardly my fault, sir. I mean, starboard lookout should have told us we were over a dodgy bit. <laughs> hey, who is he? Oh, dear, I never thought of that. When I was made up, I forgot to replace myself. <laughs> we haven't got a starboard lookout. Number one. I mean, Commodore, what on earth is going on? Are we or are we not aground? Ever so slightly, yes, sir. <laughs> ah, splendid. Eh? Pardon? I said splendid. This will put a stop to all this ridiculous promotion nonsense. As senior officer aboard, Commodore, you are director responsible. Now, let me see. There's hazarding your ship, damaging admiralty property. I wouldn't go any further. Oh, I most certainly will. <laughs> I'm going to make a full report. <laughs> oh, well, uh, in that case, sir, uh, can uh, we make one out as well? Oh, certainly. Your evidence will be most useful. I doubt whether you really want it, though, Captain Povey, sir. Not want it? Why ever not? Well, you see, we've had a signal, and the Commodore's promotion was wrong. Not a large mistake. Goldstein has resigned. So that makes you senior officer. At the time. <laughs> at the time, we ran aground. Sir. <laughs> Me? Senior officer at the time. It, it's a trick. I, I don't know how you've done it, but it must be. Hazarding the ship? Damaging admiralty property. Endangering the lives of naval personnel. And Pertwee's in particular. <laughs> this, is, this is monstrous. I... Uh, beg pardon, sir. I know this may not be quite the right time to bring it up, but when you can see your way clear, I'd still like to be a leading seaman. Oh, so... Steen, one of these days I'll... 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 Consider it, sir. Yo, very well, I'll consider it. <laughs> And that was John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips, and Stephen Murray working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one. Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, Abel Seaman Ginger was Michael Bates, Abel Seaman Goldstein was Tony Levens, and Aunt Morpeth was played by Heather Chasen. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the Navy Lark with our three stars, Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray, and John Pertwee. <laughs> with everyone's domestic expenses, there's usually one item which rocks the family budget. Well, in our household, I reckon it's Mrs. Boyle's hairdos. <laughs> she reckons it's Robin's Sunday morning pie to wallop. But the director of naval expenditure, however, he knows exactly who it is that's mucking up his books. HMS Troutbridge. It's for this reason he's sent for Captain Povey. I'm terribly sorry, Captain Povey, but the director of naval expenditure, Mr. Merivale, is not available. <laughs> but I have an appointment. Well, he left word that he'd like you to see his personal, private, confidential undersecretary. Mr. Merivale hoped you'd be a mean avail to that, sir. Oh, well, I suppose it's unavailable. <laughs> I mean unavoidable. I... Uh, this way, sir. Captain Povey from Portsmouth to see you, Mr. Gaylord. Oh, do, do, do come in, old chap. Sorry the director isn't here, but he was called away on an urgent matter. You know how these things crop up, oh, don't quite, you? quite nothing serious, I trust. Oh, good googlies, no, no, no. <laughs> One of the sea lords popped in and offered to take him round to the saucy Sam Peekaboo Club. The what? Come off it, Povey, old man. Do you mean to tell me you haven't seen Saucy Sam's latest review? The nine o'clock nudes of 1991? <laughs> no, I most certainly have not. Ah, oh, shame. They've got the most amazing fan dancer there this week, specially brought over from Spain, you know. Supposed to be the absolute rage of Madrid. I don't care about it. Have they really? <laughs> very, uh, very hot-blooded, the Spanish, I understand. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? 
luscious lil. Oh, really? <laughs> Mr. Gaylord, I've come all the way up here from Portsmouth about some urgent matter concerning naval expenditure. I did not come here to discuss luscious lil. Oh, you're so right, old boy. Well, now, the uh, Director of Naval Expenditure has been totting up the old LSD for the year, and he was glad to find that the naval expenditure's gone down, with one glaring exception. Really? Well, that can hardly be anything to do with my flotilla, can it? Uh, I'm constantly... Co Trot bridge. Trot bridge. Mm. <laughs> Their little pilots have cost us almost as much as the rest of the home fleet put together. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Well, it shook the big white chief, all right. He set up a committee, and their investigation has shown that the pileups have usually been caused by the most irresponsible navigational errors on this chap... Sub-Lieutenant Phillips. Oh, they're so right! Yeah, well, here's the point. They've decided to send down one of the instructors from the navigation school to give him a three-day test. Oh, that'll do it! Oh, oh Sub-Lieutenant Phillips won't understand a word, he says. <laughs> When's he coming? The day after tomorrow, old boy. A captain, uh, somebody or other. The point is this. Bearing in mind your constant watch on expenditure, we wondered if, uh, if you and your wife could put him up. Oh, we'll pay the usual allowances, of course. No need to tell the wife about that, huh? Oh, no. No, I suppose not. <laughs> no. Um, I'll expect this captain from the navigation school the day after tomorrow. Oh, jolly sporting of you. I say, you better let Troutbridge know he's coming, too. We, we do like everyone to know about these unexpected inspections. Saves us a fortune in courts martial, you know. <laughs> Very well. I, I hardly think Mr. Phillips can learn enough about navigation in a day to stop his court martial. Well, I hope he can. I mean, apart from his, they'll be yours, won't they? <laughs> yes, I suppose. <laughs> you're mine? Well, you're flotilla, old boy. You're supposed to know what's going on, what? Well, then, have a nice trip back. Cheerio, baby. <laughs> It returns after being displaced from its equilibrium position by one direct movement to the north position, instead of executing a number of oscillations. Mm. This is known as the deadbeat compass. Does that book help, Mr. Phillips? Well, not really, sir. No. From here on, I should be known as the deadbeat navigation officer who lost his equilibrium. <laughs> I've been right through this book, and there's not a word about the old left hand down a bit anywhere. <laughs> Surprise, surprise. I wonder if I ought to drop the author a line and explain my system to him. Oh, I shouldn't bother. You, you don't seem to realise how serious this is. I've, I've got a nasty, sneaking suspicion that this chap from the navigation school and I may not see eye to eye to eye to eye. <laughs> uh, me to me. Uh, no, I mean eye to me. No, uh, to him. Halt! Uh, thank you. <laughs> Why don't you try the old comrade's approach? Ask him how all the people are that were at the school when you were there. Well, that's rather the snag, sir. You see, I never was there. <laughs> what? On the day my navigation course started, I... I caught measles. <laughs> then I got whooping cough, and by the time I'd reported back from the sick bay, the course was over. Well, didn't they put you on the next one? No, sir. Nobody had noticed that I hadn't been on the first one. <laughs> Good gracious. Oh, well, that accounts for quite a lot, doesn't it? Well, I don't see why, sir. Uh, the final exams... I came forth. Just a minute. I thought you hadn't sat for the exam. I hadn't. Fascinating. <laughs> Didn't anybody query it? No. <laughs> Mind you, the chap who came fifth looked a bit puzzled for a bit. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Uh, but the question is, how am I going to keep Leslie out of the soggy muck with this chap from the school now? Oh, I've taken certain precautions on that little matter, Mr. Phillips. I felt this problem required the agile approach of a facile mind untroubled by principle. In short, Pertwee's box. <laughs> ah, I expect that's him now. Come in, Chief. I trust you've thought of some solution to Mr. Phillips' little difficulty? Uh, yes, sir. I've, uh, I've considered the whole situation in all its spectacles, sir. And there's a very simple way out. Oh, thank heavens. Now, what is it, Chief? Oh, sir, just before this navigation school bloke gets here, sir, dessert. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, I suppose I... Oh. <laughs> Could well be right, Chief, but I think we shall just have to find a somewhat less drastic solution somehow. Oh, no, wait a minute. How about a nasty attack of the twinging screw, sir? <laughs> uh, 
very bad for the navigation rules, the twinging screws, are they? Possibly, but Captain Povey is wise to them now. Yeah, I'd noticed, sir. Yeah. Oh, see then, see then. Come on, put me now then. What's that? Oh, all right then. I oh, know. Look here. How about this? How about compassionate leave as your dear old white haired mother is stuck in the doorway of the. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. No. But it's inflammable, that is, sir. <laughs> I mean, you can't leave white haired old mothers stuck in the doorway. No, chief. <laughs> I'm afraid we shall have to this time. Well, tell me I'm doing my best. Just a moment. Aren't you forgetting one? Eh? Which one's that, sir? Well, it's a little difficult to explain, but it works on the lines of, before you take any action over the outrageous thing I've just done, I hope you'll remember the small favour I did you ten years ago. <laughs> well, what's the good of that? I mean, I never had done this chap a favour. Oh, I don't know. You caught measles and stayed away from his classes. He ought to be grateful for that. <laughs> You know, I wish you two would take me seriously. If I'm not careful, I'll get slung out. Hmm, there is that possibility, I suppose. That'd mean we'd get somebody else. And I must admit, I'm not keen on that. Oh, that's jolly nice. Jolly nice of you, sir. Well, not really. I'm working on the theory, better the steaming nit we know than the one we don't. <laughs> if you ask me, sir, here, here. Well, I... I really don't know what to say. It's jolly nice of you chaps to put it like that. Chap appreciates it. Comradeship of the service and all that. You know, it's really very touching. I'm really quite... Better than what? <laughs> Steaming knit. Oh. Sir. Yes. Ah, wait a minute. I've got it. I've got it. Is it? I saw a film. Uh, once. Is it? Uh, yeah, uh, once, yes. Uh, it, it's easy. All we've got to do is to time to a railway line, and then just before the express train comes along, I nip up and release him, you see. Uh, once you've saved a chap's life, he can hardly, uh, hardly... <laughs> what are you two looking at me like that for? Mr. Phillips, how long is it since you went to the pictures? <laughs> Look, sir, that one's so old, they're not even showing that one on television. <laughs> no, but they will. <laughs> well, all the same, sir, I reckon he's on the right track. Oh, he is. That's the whole point. I mean, there's no sense in tying him to another line if the express train <laughs> is on the All right, Noddy. I think you'd better leave this to we bigger boys to sort out. Uh, go on, Chief. Well, I wouldn't suggest this normally, sir, but the situation is a bit desperate. So, mm. supposing this captain, whoever he is, mm. should happen to be on the dockside after dark and should accidentally sort of get shoved in. That wouldn't do any good, Chief. They sent another one. Look, I haven't quite finished, sir. I was going to suggest that after he landed in the drink, a certain sub-lieutenant Phillips might be around to dive in and save him. Oh. oh, blimey, that one creaks a bit, doesn't it? Well, not so much as tying him to a railway line, sir. <laughs> it's me best offer. I don't like it, but I can't think of anything better. <laughs> I wonder how you like staying at the Povey's house for three days. Cool. <laughs> Henry Purvey, switch that vacuum cleaner off at once. I'm only doing out the spare room, as you said, my love. Oh, no, you're not. I said nothing about allowing you to use that machine. I told you to do it with our little dustpan and brush. <laughs> I, I can't, my love. The brush is worn out. Oh, no, it's not. I'm not a fool, Henry. I saw you out in the yard cutting all the bristles off of the garden shard. Oh, dear. A nice way to treat my birthday present to you, I must say. Oh. I was only trying to trim the bristles up, my love. Oh. Well, you've done that all right. All you've got now is a handle with a five o'clock shadow. I'll buy a new one, my love. Naturally. Well, take your apron off. This guest of yours should be here any time now. Nice carry-on this is, turning the place into a common lodging house for three days. It wasn't my idea. And another thing. You're holding something back. You've been treacherous ever since you got that signal telling you who this captain is. 
One of your old cronies, I suppose. Not mine. One of yours. What was that? Well, come along now, speak up. Uh, well, if you must know, I understand the chap who's coming here from the navigation school is Captain Franklin Pettigrees. What? Snogger Pettigrees. Oh. <laughs> from the Chatham days, my love. Good grief. Of all the... Franklin, come in here. I'm afraid so. Oh, no, this is too much. The man I might have married come in here to show me what a fool I was to turn him down. I wish you hadn't, too. That will do. And if we have any more of this nasty show of temper, there'll be no passion fruit for you next Christmas. <laughs> listen, listen, there's a motor. It's stopping outside here. Well, it's so big, it stopped outside next door as well. <laughs> it's him. Look. There he is, handsome as ever. <laughs> so distangue, with that hair graying of the temples and that, that slow, purposeful walk. If you ask me, he just looks thumping old. I didn't ask you. Quick, Henry, off with your apron and answer the door. Yes, very well, my love. Now, I, I must tidy up a bit. Oh, good morning, my man. Here is my card. The lady of the house is expecting me. I beg your pardon. Good gracious, it's Curly Povey. <laughs> I'd never, never have known you. Tell me, how is the delectable Ramona? Oh, uh, she, she's fighting fit. She'll be down in a minute. Come in, come in. Jolly nice of you, jolly nice of you. Take the cases, will you? Uh, your man can take them up to my room later. My man? We haven't got any servants. No servants? Great Scott, you don't mean to tell me that poor dear Ramona has been reduced to actually having to soil those pale lily-white hands of hers? Oh, certainly not. I have to do all the housework. <laughs> Quite right, too. But I think she's coming. Good grief, Ramona. Where are you going? Nowhere, Henry. Why? But you've got your evening dress on and all those shiny beads your mother gave you and the feather boa your grandmother left you. Now, don't be tiresome, Henry. You know we always dress for dinner. We do. But I thought you must be opening some bazaar. What? <laughs> Franklin. Ramona. My dear Franklin, how utterly delightful to see you again. Ramona, my dear, it's been so long. In fact, looking at you, I had no idea it had been so long. <laughs> so well, Franklin, dear, and you look so distinguished. And you're as enchanting as ever, Ramona. <coughs> Henry Povey, do you have to keep coughing and spluttering all over the place? <laughs> now, out you go to the kitchen and have some of that delicious medicine I bought you. Oh, no, my love, not that stuff. I shan't be able to go to the office. Besides, I, I haven't got a cold. I, I was just wondering if Snog, uh, uh, Franklin would like a drink. <laughs> I'll just have a spot of brandy, Curly. Brandy? We've only got fizzy orange. What? Oh, huh? Oh, yes. Henry, get your coat and get on to the local pub. Um, a hostelry. And bring back a miniature brandy for Franklin, a pseudo sham for me, and you've got your fizzy orange already, so that's the one. What? But leave you here with... Don't argue, Henry. We have a guest. Yes. <laughs> Landlord, here, my nurse. All right, over here if you please. Oh, strike the line. Oi, be a basher. <laughs> now then, look here. It may be Sydney's night off, but his last words before he left were no credit for CPO Pertwee. Good night. Perhaps we'd do better if I tried, Chief. My credit slate is a little less monumental than yours. Yes, Mr. Murray. Same again? I think so. You know, I still think my idea about tying this chap to the railway line would be a lot simpler. There's a train at 11.20. Forget it, mm. Mr. Phillips. Look, it's no go, sir. I mean, supposing we let you tie him to the railway line. You'll probably find that when you went to rescue him in the nick of time, you tied a double granny and you couldn't untie it. <laughs> Oh, nasty. <laughs> now, I hate to 
to say it, but the accidental shove in the dock still seems to be the best idea up to now. Yeah, if only we could find some way of getting him down there after dark. I suppose he'll be up at old Thunderguts' place by now. Yes, indeed. Ah. <laughs> oh, Lummy, it's old Captain uh, Povey. <laughs> Yes, I, we, we thought you were tied to a railway line. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, navigating a trip. Captain Povey, sir, we don't often see you in here. Mrs. Povey, away again? Unfortunately, no. Well, that is... Well, uh, gentlemen, I, I need your help. I'm being usurped. Oh, sir. Well, now, I don't know whether to congratulate you or offer my deepest sympathy. <laughs> Why not? I don't know what a usurp is. <laughs> What's happened, sir? It's this chap from the navigation school, Captain Franklin Pettigrees. And as you know, he's staying at my place, but unfortunately, he also happens to be an old uh, acquaintance of my wife's. I am definitely being usurped. Oh, I do wish I knew what a usurp was. <laughs> they advertise them on the telly, Chief. Yeah? Do you usurp or some other well-known washing <laughs> 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 uh, sorry, pardon. This is uh, no laughing matter, is it, sir? No, it thumping well isn't. The sooner that man goes, the better. I second that. There's a train at 11.20. <laughs> and I know where there's a ball of string. Look, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> look, Mr. Phillips, uh, look, I do wish you'd stop arping about your flaming puff puff. <laughs> What's he talking about? Oh, uh, uh, but, uh, Captain Purvey, sir, it seems to me that the quickest way of getting rid of this chap is to satisfy him that Mr. Phillips is competent. You're joking. You must... No, not exactly. I mean... I presume that should Mr. Phillips be proved otherwise, it won't exactly help the confirmation of your promotion. And at the same time, it might well keep this navigation chap here. Yes, I suppose that's true then enough. It seems to me, sir, that the sooner we prove to Captain Pettigree is that Mr. Phillips' navigation is sound, the better. The moment you put to sea tomorrow, Pettigree is going to know. Ha, ha, ha. But, but wait a minute. Huh? Wait a minute, though. There's just a chance of saving the situation. I saw it done once. Yes, so did I, sir. Somebody ties him to a railway line. <laughs> and just as the express Mr. thunders down... Phillips, why don't you order another shandy and jump in it? <laughs> Quiet a minute. What we need is a really delaying tactic. Now, supposing we could convince Petty Greaves that he's ill or, or caught something, he'd have to go to the sick bay, wouldn't he? Yes, sir. That would get him out of your place. Yes, and give this idiot some time to spot up his navigation. Well, he's not catching the twinge screws. They're mine. No, but this might work in with the idea we were working on. If he should happen to fall in the dock, he might well think he'd got pneumonia, mightn't he? Fall in the dock? Uh, yes, sir. We haven't much time to explain, but do you think you could persuade the captain to come down to your office in about um, half an hour? I could try. I'll do my best. <laughs> Oh, I hope old Thunderguts can think of some way of getting this chap down here. Yeah, so do I, sir. Hurt me as cues are like ice cubes. <laughs> You're worried about the cold, huh? What about me? Well, it's no worse for you, sir, than it is for me. Here. Mr. Phillips, sir. I know you're supposed to dive in and rescue our unwanted guests, sir. But that simply won't do. What won't, Chief? Well, shine your torch on him, sir. Go on, shine your torch. Uh, uh, they aren't, I thought so. He's put his bathing costume on. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, very lovely, Parisiani, I'm sure, sir. <laughs> no, 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 now put that light out. No, no, go on. <laughs> no, no, please, put, put that light out. No. <laughs> no, uh, now, Chief, no, no, no. No, no peeping. <laughs> No, go away. <laughs> Shoo. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, hasn't it occurred to you that to dive in to rescue him in a swimming costume might look just the tiniest bit obvious? Well, there's no sense in getting my uniform soaked, just to... Oh. <laughs> well, turn your backs and I'll put my uniform on again. <laughs> Well, hurry up, sir, for Drake's sake. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, I think I can hear someone coming. Yes, you're right. 
Who's going to shove Captain Pettigrew's in? Well, I think oh, I'd better, sir. Shh. Hurry Shh. up, Mr. Well, Phillips. I'm nearly ready, sir, but I, I can't understand it. The, the, the peak of my cap seems to have fallen off. I can't see it anywhere. I'm not surprised, sir. It's round the back of your neck. <laughs> You've got the flaming thing on back to front, sir. What? Oh, lummy, so I have. <laughs> Honestly, I'm all the stupid. Sir Phillips, will you shut up? Someone's what? coming. Oh, sorry, pardon. Well, I'm sure you'll think the walk was worthwhile, Penny Beams. <laughs> they came out jolly well. Well, I still don't see why they couldn't have waited until the morning. Fancy getting a chap to come down to your office at this time to look at old snaps. Right, Chief. Now. Right, sir. Leave it to me. Oh, show me the way it's going. <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry, I wanted to go to bed. I have a little drink. I have a go. I say, look out, man. Look out. Go. My blood! Oh! I say, I'm sorry, pardon me. I'm pardon I'm sorry, I'm shocked. I shall me. <laughs> Dive in, Mr. Phillips. Coming. Help. 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 I'm here. I'm here, sir. Ready? Oh, good man. Ready for what? To shout. Come on, sir. Let's together. Help. Help. What's the matter? Oh, help. What's the matter? Got cramped? No, help. I just remembered. I can't swim. Help. Help. Can you manage the pool or can I help? Poovy, what the devil are you I'm, doing in the water? I had no choice. The idiot that pushed you in pushed me in as well. Oh, help, help, help. Oh. I've, I've been down twice already. Oh. Oh. Steer green, 5-0. Steer green, 5 I said. Uh, starboard, 15. Starboard, 15. Uh, three to one, bar one. No. <laughs> Uh, uh, red. A red, sir. No, a five. No, a no, port. Five, no, a port. port. A port. Yeah, port and lemon. Port and lemon. No, I... <laughs> I, I mean, um... You, uh, uh, you mean left hand down a bit, sir? Yeah, yes, please. Cool. Come on, relax, Mr. Phillips, sir, relax. Captain Pettigreaves has left the bridge for a bit. I just can't understand his attitude. Let's face it, during this little trip, you've committed every conceivable navigational error in the book. Yeah, and a couple off the covers as well. <laughs> and yet he's just beamed and said, Excellent. Well done. Well, watch it. Here he comes. Well, gentlemen, coming into dock again, I see. Excellent trip. Excellent. But I nearly hit the light ship. Oh, hardly your fault, Phillips. It must have been off station. What? Well, I should... Oh, no, no, no. Fair's fair. Fair's fair. I mean, it's hardly their fault. I, I bash straight through. Mr. Phillips, the docks. Well, oh, right. Oh, lummy. Uh, 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 steer 3-4. Uh, steer 3-4. Uh, no, no. Uh, no. Uh, uh, bearing green. Bearing green. Uh, that, 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 that is. That uh, is no. Sorry. No. It's first arm. No, it's first arm. some of them. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, up a bit, Ada. Up a bit, eh? I... <laughs> no, uh, no. I say, I say. Have you tried left hand up a bit? Oh, rather, hundreds of times. It never fails. Except that time. <laughs> well, Mr. Phillips, sir, on behalf of the lower deck, may I say how much we've enjoyed knowing you, sir. I'm sure that you'll settle down in civilian life once you... Oh, no, no, no. Hold your horses, Coxon. You're not suggesting this navigation officer was to blame for that mishap, are you? Unavoidable little bump due to exceptionally high swell, I'd say. But the sea's as calm as a mill pond. No, down, no, man. no, it isn't. In fact, for the first time aboard, I think the swell's so bad I don't feel too well. Well, I haven't felt too well all morning. <laughs> well, that's settled then. Must leave you. Got to get back to London now. Back to London, sir. I thought this must be a three-day test. Yes, it was, but one day we'll have to do. I think you'll find my report very satisfactory. Good gracious. I, I, I mean, well, that is... I, uh, Captain Pettigrees, before you go, I've just got to know the answer. Why are you so satisfied with the nit we knows navigation? Well, frankly, gentlemen, I would have passed him if he'd beached her halfway up the Portsmouth Road. I don't like this. You may not know it, of course, but I was pushed into the dock last night by a sudden chief petty officer. I knew I wasn't going to like it. Well, I'd had about enough of a certain lady by then. 
But when I got pushed in, so did Captain Purvey. Yeah, we heard something about that, sir. I'll bet you did. The point is that Purvey immediately claimed he'd caught pneumonia and insisted on going into sickbay. Lummy. And if you think I'm going to stay in that house for two more days when that ghastly woman is on her tod, you're playing cuckoo. <laughs> I'm going back to Admiralty where it's safe. I do like it. Oh, I see, sir. Very wise of you. I, uh, I suppose you wouldn't care for a noggin in the wardroom before you go. No, I wouldn't dare. I want to get on that train before she finds I've gone. There's one about 12.30. And if I get that, I might just be in time for the matinee at Saucy Sam's Peekaboo Club. <laughs> Luscious Lil's last week before she returned to her native Madrid, you know. Cheerio. Cheerio, sir. Yeah, give our love to Luscious Lil, sir. And if you go round after, don't bother with the old I, I, I senorita stuff. <laughs> I remember her when she was working at the laundrette in Ballum. <laughs> Back to the old left hand, down a beat, sir. Up to the top and down again. Mind the bonnet. Keep off the grass. Pop, pop. We're coming through. That's the way we like it. That's the way. And that was Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray, and John Pertwee working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Mrs. Povey was Heather Chasen, Captain Franklin Pettigrews was Ronnie Barker, Percy the barman was Michael Bates, and Mr. Gaylord was Tanny Evans. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Stephen Murray, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips. My wife is, is always engaged in a running battle with our laundry. Their seven-day service usually takes nine days at least, and if there's a public holiday, well, then that's the last of Robin's little woolly vests for a month. <laughs> the only time we can be sure they'll turn up with blinding efficiency is the week they put their prices up. Again. However, on Troutbridge, CPO Pertwee has a different sort of laundry problem altogether. I'm not happy. <laughs> this is going to start something we regret. I know it is. I'm definitely not happy. I want nothing to do with it. And what's more, I am not happy. I am not. <laughs> That's so? You're a great big pot of pessimism. <laughs> There's no need to go round like the voice of gloom and doom. You've checked the laundry, haven't you? Yes. You've checked it twice, haven't you? Yes. And on both occasions... You found they'd sent us back 20 more pairs of pyjamas than we sent them, didn't you? Yes. Well, they are then. Pertwee's got 20 pairs of ex-naval, freshly laundered, blue and white, double-strength, wincyette pyjamas going cheap. <laughs> All I'm asking is, what's the best way of flogging the perishers? Well, don't look at me. I've got enough already, thank you. The thought never entered my bonds, that's so. Besides, <laughs> I happen to know you're skint. Yeah, well, you were around. That's pretty automatic, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Yeah, but since I got lumber with working under you, Abel Seaman Johnson's payday's been a farce. That'll do. Most weeks I'm not allowed to hold on to me lolly long enough to make it warm. Will you belt up? I'd rather not. Yep, you, sh you suit yourself. But if you don't, I'll belt you. My up is belted. <laughs> yeah, just in time and all. Now then. How do we flog these little wincy at windfalls, then? Well, you won't flog them to any of the ratings, that's for sure. They get issued with them. And if you're thinking of flogging them to the officers, I want a draft to another ship before you start. Look, I wasn't... Oh, you know what it'll be. I've seen it happen before. Look, Johnson... You'll flog the gear to the officers and they'll tumble they bought Admiralty property. Look, Johnson, will Inquiries you... will start and that'll be that. Johnson, I shan't... Chief Petty the Officer Pert, we will have vanished and Fatso will carry the can as usual. Johnson! I'm not happy! You certainly won't be happy! <laughs> You chatty, chuffering, chattering great clot. Well, I'm not. I've said it before. If you say it again, you'll get clobbered. <laughs> well, I'm warning you, who said anything anyway about flogging this lot to the officers? I did. Well, you were wrong. I want to flog them to civilians. Yeah. These pyjamas, Johnson, are about to see something of the big outside world. Well, they're big outside pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. 
Don't push Pertwee too far. <laughs> well, I don't want to get done for flogging Pinch pyjamas. You won't be if we flog them outside, will you? Now then, relax. Now, what's the best way of getting rid of them? <laughs> I know. Why didn't you put an advert in the local paper in there for sale, Collie Mummy Mum? <laughs> Stone me. Why didn't I think of that? It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah I'll pop round to the newspaper office straight away. And if I chat him nicely, we might make this week's edition. <laughs> Hello, sir. Have you a quiet read? Hmm? I was. I don't doubt it's over now. Well, you're jolly lucky to have something to read, sir. That's the trouble with this wardroom. If, if we ever get any decent magazines, either the captain knocks them off for his own cabin, or Lieutenant Bates tears the pages out to light his pipe. Oh, you're very hard done by. I jolly well am. Three times this week I've started stories and got halfway through them before I'd realized Batesy had been at it. Mm, very frustrating. Yes, very. In one story, I knew what they'd done, but I didn't know who. <laughs> and twice I, I knew who'd done it, but I didn't know what. You're very lucky. After the one I read the other night, I neither knew who'd done it or what they'd done. Is that the evening paper you've got there, sir? No, it's the Portsmouth Herald Tribune and Hampshire Weekly World Guardian, which incorporates the South Sea Global Gazette and Haven't Empire Weekly Clarion. <laughs> How interesting. Hmm. How, uh, could I have some of the middle pages? Don't be ridiculous, Mr. Phillips. It doesn't have any middle pages. <laughs> Lovely, they didn't half name the front and back pages, didn't they? <laughs> no, just the front page, actually. The back one's all advertisements. Oh, this one's rather gay, I thought. Oh, which one's that, sir? Hmm? Oh, this. Davenport and Kildersleeves proudly announce a mammoth sale of slightly damaged plastic-topped harpsichords. <laughs> Everything must go. Well, Davenport and Kildersleeves can go for a start. Mm, I agree. Ah, now this must have been a close game. Oh, was that? Gosport Gadabouts 1, Cosham All-Stars 72. <laughs> well, sir... It could have been worse. After all, the Gosport Gadabouts did get one. Yeah, from the report, I gather the Gosport Gadabout centre forward also scored most of Cosham All Stars 72. <laughs> I suppose you weren't playing for them, Mr. Phillips? Uh, no, sir, but my brother Cedric plays centre forward for. Oh. Uh... <laughs> poor old CD. I, I suppose you haven't finished with that paper yet, have you, sir? Mm, very nearly. What about this in the small advertisements? Oh, what's that? Sir? For sale, small quantity of Natty Gents pyjamas. Genuine reduction. Originally five guineas, now eight and eleven. <laughs> Nummy. That's genuine enough, if you like. I've, I've a jolly good mind to try them, you know. It's an odd thing, but I keep wearing my bottoms out. <laughs> Very odd. <laughs> shouldn't be such a fidget in your cot. <laughs> well, a chap's got to get comfy, you know. <laughs> well, even at the risk of wearing out his bottoms. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, why don't you send for a pair of these natty gents' pyjamas for 8 and 11? What have you got to lose? 8 and 11 and the Shrupney stamp. <laughs> oh, go on. Easy come, easy go. All right. Now, what's the address, sir? Um, box number 346, mm. care of the Portsmouth Herald Tribune and Hampshire Weekly Guardian, incorporating the South Sea Global <laughs> Gazette and Haven't Empire Weekly Clarion Buildings, High Street. Do you think that'll find them, sir? I think so, Mr. Phillips. Mm. If you can get it all on one envelope... Hello, Chief. Ah, oh, you're back from your walkies, are you? All right, then, where is it? Where's what? Well, a sack full of letters in answer to our advert, of course. There ain't one. Box number 346 has only had one reply. Here it is. All right, give us it, then. Oh, it's nothing but it. Isn't it flaming marvellous? <laughs> what? Look, only one reply, and that has to come from Sub-Lieutenant Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> He must have worn out his bottoms again. <laughs> I'll wear yours out in a minute. Look, now what do we do? Well, send him one of the 20 pairs, I suppose. Are you potty? Look, he'll spot their admiralty property straight away. 
And then the fat will be in the fire. Won't you? <laughs> I want a draft. I'm not happy. I want no, a don't draft. Don't start that again. Don't start that again for Drake's sake. What I got to send him is a pair of pyjamas that are nothing like Admiralty issue. Oh, you mean like that pair I brought back from Hong Kong for my mum Min with all the... Good morning. <laughs> we'll back. Now then, where are they? They're in Hong Kong. Hey? The moths have had them. They wouldn't fit. They wouldn't even fit the moths. <laughs> They're not real pyjamas at all. They're kimomomomo type. Kimomomomomo? Yeah, kimomomomomo. Sounds like the name of two stroke scooter. <laughs> well, that's what it is then. You can't go to bed wearing a two stroke hey, scooter. You're all right. <laughs> too late. Too late, no hard luck. I remember seeing your Kimimimi pyjamas when you bought them. Yeah, that's right. They're just the thing. Go on, go fetch them. Yeah, you're rotten. That's what you are. Absolutely stinking rotten. If rotten's at a club, you'll be chief rotten, chairman rotten, on sec rotten, and carried you nanny mini mouse rotten. <laughs> Will you call cut about your rottens? No, I shan't. I'm not happy. Help up! Now, where's those Kimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimim
what do you mean? That, oh, good Lord, I say. <laughs> well, I, I don't care what you say. I, I think they're an absolute Chinese bargain. Uh, I say, number one, old fruit. Can you spare me a minute? Oh, you lummy, it's the captain. Oh, certainly, sir. Come in. Yes, yes, do, old socks. Nice of you to call. Come in. We don't see nearly enough of each other. Jumping Jenny, who's this? The cook from Who Flung's Chinese restaurant? No, sir, no, sir, it's me. It's Sub Lieutenant Phillips. Is it? Yes, sir. Oh, my word, so it is, yes. You're asking for it, aren't you, old Mandarin? Offices aren't supposed to take jobs cooking in restaurants, you know. Oh, no, very poor do, old bamboo suits. Their lordships won't like it. But I haven't, sir. There is new pyjamas, sir. Pyjamas? But what are you doing wandering about in pyjamas at this time of day? What Povey would say if he came in here and caught this idiot getting up in the middle of the afternoon and cooking Chinese food in his pyjamas, I can't think. No, he's not, sir. Anyway, he should use a saucepan. The pyjamas get all messy with cooking pyjamas. No, he, he bought that lot for eight and eleven, and he was just showing them to us. Eight and eleven? For them? Oh, 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 my word. I must get a pair of those for myself. Where'd you get them from, old top? Oh, he's, he's forgotten. Sir, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. they, they wouldn't have your size. Oh, no, no, they, 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 they fall to bits. Blah, 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 fall to bits. As soon as you put them on, first wash. Oh, no good nonsense, Chief. I think they're jolly good value. I intend to send off for a couple of pairs at once. But you do it? Yes, rather. I mean, if they'd been the shoddy old Wincyette stuff, I wouldn't have bothered. But these, I mean, these are really worth having. I think I'll send for some more as well. Yes, put me down for three or four pairs as well, number one, O'Fruit. Oh, I could wear them when I'm fishing for the big fella. <laughs> and if he puts his head out of the water, I'll blind the bounder. <laughs> we should pass the word round to the chaps about these. We might even tell Captain Povey. Why don't you order some for yourself, Chief? They make jolly good presents for some of the... Chief! Chief! Wake up, Chief! What's the matter with him? He, he looks as if he's been hit by a bus. I wish I had been. I think I might need an urgent draft to Hong Kong for a couple of days. Who is it? It's your husband, my love. Henry? Henry, Pervy, I won't have you playing little tunes on me knocker. Stop it at once. <laughs> But I want to come in, my love. Why? I live here. You know the house rules, Henry. You are not allowed in until five o'clock and there are two minutes to go. But it's freezing out here, my love. Good. Now wait. Very well, my love. Right. Time's up. Are you sober? Of course I am, my love. Well, they're not even open yet. Trust you to know that. So, good boy, you can come in. Yes. Your apron is waiting for you in the kitchen. A great spurs, Henry, and then you can have your boiled sweetie. Oh. <laughs> Certainly, my love, and thank you. But there was something I wanted to ask you, Ramona, dear. Now, what is it, then? Well, I, um, I don't quite... Uh... Can I get you a chair, my love? Are you quite mad? Why should I want to sit down in the middle of the hall for? No, 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 no. No, I, I thought perhaps we could go into the sitting room, my love, and have a chat. You've had all the chats in the sitting room you're getting this week. <laughs> it's about a bargain, my love. A bargain? Who for? Well, me, I suppose. But it'll save us both money. Yeah, well, in that case, speak up, Henry. Permission to chat. Thank you, my love. It's, it, it concerns an advertisement for some pyjamas. Some pa Henry Purvey, watch your language. <laughs> but I only said... I heard the word the first time, thank you. You may be a common sailor, but there's no need to bring coarseness in the house. <laughs> there are certain items of masculine apparel that a gentleman does not mention in front of a lady. Sorry, pardon, I'm sure, my love. Granted this time. Well, carry on. Yeah, well, Sub-Lieutenant Phillips sent for a pair of these, uh... These... Nighttime unmentionables. Go on. Quite. Right. Well, he sent for them, and for eight shillings and eleven pennies, number one tells me he got a magnificent pair of... nighttime unmentionables. I see. So I suppose you want a set as well. Yes, please. All the officers are sending for them, my love. 
Oh, uh, very well. Permission to spend pocket money? Uh, yes. Well, that's the point. I, I already have my love. You have what? I've spent it, my love. I was wondering if I could possibly have an advance of eight shillings and eleven pennies on next week's. I see. Well, now we're getting at the truth, aren't we? You've been squander-bugging again, haven't you? <laughs> oh, very well. Get your account book out. It's here, my love. No. Eight and eleven pence. Now, let me see. With the interest, that'll be, uh, yes. I owe Ramona nine shillings and sixpence. Well, sign here. Oh, very well, my love. That's a good boy. Now, while I fetch the money, you can get started on your grades. Or if you go, and heaven help you, if there's nighttime unmentionables, aren't worth every penny. Oh, they will be. I shall look like Valentino, my love. Don't be disgusted. <laughs> Go on, to your greats, Henry, to your greats. Look at him. Look at him. Look at the perishers. Framing orders pouring in by every post. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to laugh at, you giggly great grease ball. Number one's passed the word round, all right. I reckon every officer in the flaming navy's ordered pyjamas. Some of the ratings are written in all, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed. I also found one order from a certain able seaman Johnson. I presume that was your idea of a joke. No. Everybody kept telling me what a bargain they were, and I didn't want to miss it. <laughs> oh, I should have known. Right, Miss, this is. Look, we got orders for 298 pairs now. 298. You know what? I think I'm building an empire out of tatty pyjamas. People will stop me in the street and call me the Kamehamehameh King. If you don't deliver them, people will stop you in the street and call you someone else. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's all going to get flaming ugly if I don't get hold of some more pyjamas from somewhere a bit sharpish. You're properly in it this time, aren't you? <laughs> don't gloot, that's so. Pertwee's not a goner yet. Now then, who was it who supplied the first 20 pairs? The laundry, of course. That's right. Well, that's where the rest are coming from. I've got a little job for you. Yeah, I thought you might have. Right, now look, today's the day they send all the laundry back, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Now, all you've got to do is trot round behind the van. Yeah. See, and, and whenever they leave the baskets on the dock for each ship, yeah. whip the pyjamas before the crew picks them up. Is that all? That's all. Good morning. Come here. <laughs> you suit yourself. If this little lot blows up, they're going to be asking the newspaper office for a description of the bloke who's been picking up the mail for box number 346. Oh, hey. What? Yeah. And with your shape, I don't reckon you'd be hard to trace. You're rotten. Yeah, and you're rotund. Look, are you going to pinch the pyjamas out of all the other ship's laundry or not? All right, I'll do it, but I'll tell you something. What? I'm not happy. Get on with it. You can say what you like, but I reckon it's a diabolical liberty. Well, what is, sir? Well, you're the only one to get a decent pair of pyjamas out of that advert. Everybody else has got these terrible blue and white striped wincyette things. Now, there's something pretty dodgy going on here, and I'm beginning to get a fair idea who's behind it. I presume you mean C.P.O. Pertwee, eh, sir? Hmm? Why? Oh, nothing much. Except that, as far as I know, he's the only one who hasn't sent for a pair. And for the past week, he's hardly been seen outside the stores, the door of which is permanently locked, but from within can be heard the constant rustle of wrapping up with brown paper. <laughs> you know, sir, you've got a suspicious mind. Uh, I don't think I'm the only one. There are two gentlemen coming here in a moment from the laundry to ask a few questions. What about, sir? Patience, Mr. Phillips. I think we're just going to find out. Oh. Come in. Oh, how do you do? Sorry to trouble you like this. I'm the manager of the majestic and finished Superior Laundry and Bagwash. And this is my chief checking clerk from Claims. Oh, I'm very worried. Uh, why? What have you done, actually? Uh, well, uh, <coughs> it's, uh... <laughs> it's these claims for missing articles of laundry. Claims? Yes. Up to now, we've had claims for 892 pairs of pyjamas. Pouring in they are from every ship in the fleet. Except this one. Oh. Uh, what sort of pyjamas? Terrible things. Blue and white striped wincyettes. It's come to our notice that a large number of pyjamas have also been sold recently. 
And after inquiries, we also discovered that the sale started with this ship. Oh, um, yes, they did. <clears throat> We've also had a complaint from our van driver that whenever he comes into the docks, he's followed by a very fat round sailor with truth bridge on his hat. <laughs> We're not actually making any accusations, you understand. No, but we're coming as close to it as we can. Yes. <laughs> Until we can catch the blighters or pilfer in our beautiful laundry and have them locked up. Yes, I see what you're getting at, but I think I can satisfy you that you're making a mistake. You can, sir? Yes, Mr. Phillips. Show the gentleman the pyjamas you bought. Do you mean the ones I bought? Sir? That's Maybe. right, the Chinese silk ones with the dragons all over the... all over them. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese silk dragons? Oh, they're not like the missing ones at all. Oh, no, no. And as I said, they are blue and white striped wincy Well, so are the ones that everybody else Thank you, actually... Mr. Phillips. That'll be all. Sorry we can't help you further, gentlemen. You never know. Perhaps these missing pyjamas will turn up having been um, mislaid in transit, perhaps. I wish they would, but it's hardly likely, is it? Oh, I don't know. Stranger things have happened. At least they have on this ship. <laughs> Well, come along, Mr. Squelch. We shall have to think again. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Happy hunting, Mr. Squelch. Well, now we know what's been going on all right, don't we? Ah, that'll be the chief. I asked him to come up. Oh, why, sir? Intuition, Mr. Phillips. I somehow had a feeling I should want to see him after the laundry people had called. Oh. Come in. You wanted to see me, see Yes, you? Chief. Shan't keep you a minute. I just want to finish writing this. Well, I said. <clears throat> Those two chaps from the laundry gone ashore yet? Yeah? Uh, yes, sir. They went straight. Hey, from where, sir? <laughs> laundry, Chief. Yeah, right. Well, as you're busy, sir, I won't trouble you now. <laughs> I'll come back next year. Stand sir. fast, Chief. Uh, well, I'd rather not say no thanks all the same. Nice of you to be invited, Mr. Chief. Not... What? The laundry manager and his claims waller were mighty curious about certain pyjamas that have disappeared out of the laundry delivered to the docks. Yeah, very careless of them, sir. Very I've always said they were a slapdash lot. Yeah, very possibly. Now, fortunately, I'm not a suspicious man. No, not much. <laughs> cool. No, no barracking, Mr. Phillips, please. As I said, I'm not suspicious, so I persuaded the laundry that the missing pyjamas may well turn up in the near future. I... But they can't do so. That is, well, well, and, well I, I, I was about... No, you weren't. <laughs> I'll tell you what you were about to do. You're going to take up a collection, Chief, for the benefit of a majestic, hand-finished, superior laundry and bag wash. I am. He is? He is. And here's the first contribution. My pair of blue and white striped Winciette pyjamas. That'll cost you nine and eleven pence. Thank you, Chief. Nine and eleven pence? But they were only eight and eleven. Shocking the way the cost of living keeps going up, isn't it? <laughs> Stone me. Nine and eleven. Plus threepence for the postings. Oh, yes. Ten and twopence. Any questions, Chief? Yeah, just the one, sir. Just the one, sir. Who did it? Who put the squeak in? That's what I want to know. Who did it? Did what, Chief? Nobody's done anything as far as we actually know, have they? Or... Have they? Who knows? No, 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 nothing at all, sir. Nothing. No, 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 no. Splendid. Ten shillings and twopence, please. Oh, yes, sir. Many thanks. Oh, in case you have any difficulty in making up the, um, collection, I'm having this advertisement put in next week's local paper. The ad advert? Perhaps you care to read it, Chief. But I'd rather not, so I haven't got the right glasses. Read it, it, Chief. <laughs> Very well, sir. Wanted urgently by box number 346. Large quantities of blue and white striped Winciette pyjamas. <laughs> Nine and eleven a pair offered by Chief Petty Officer Pertwee, HMS Troutbridge. P.S. Postage refunded. <laughs> yes, well, that... I'll be skint, that's what I'll be. That'll be all, Chief. Oh, uh, there is one other thing. I also had a letter from the laundry to say that they'd accidentally sent back 20 pairs of pyjamas too many about a week ago. You'll see they're returned as well, won't you? <laughs> it's not fair, sir. I've worked Fatso's fingers to the bone, and what have I got? You got off jolly lightly. Carry on, Chief, and sleep well. <laughs> sleep well. <laughs> Thank you.
That was Stephen Murray, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Mrs. Povey was Heather Chasen, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, the manager of the laundry was Michael Bates, and his clerk was played by Tony Evans. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, for the last time in the current series, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips, and Stephen Murray. <laughs> yes, it's time for the crew of HMS Troutbridge to go on leave again. The time when the hearts of their families are filled with sheer stark terror at the prospect of having them at home. An admiralty faced the even grimmer prospect. It's only a matter of time before they'll be back again. Mind you, with Sub-Lieutenant Phillips in charge of travelling arrangements, it's doubtful whether they'll ever go at all. Ah, here's a train will do for you, sir. Departs 9.43 and arrives in London at... Oh. <laughs> well? It doesn't seem to go to London. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, up to now, you've given me 23 trains that'll do, followed rapidly by the same 23 trains that won't. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Here we are, sir. Oh, look, this is it, sir. Look, departs Portsmouth 10.23 and arrives in London at 10.22. <laughs> Lummy. How does it do that? Perhaps it goes backwards. <laughs> Why, of course. Now, why didn't I... Oh. <laughs> Come in. Oh, good morning, sir. I've got the list uh, for railway warrant for Saturday, sir. Oh, right, Chief. I'll push them through. Th where are you going, Chief? Uh, don't tell him, Chief, or he'll look up 500 trains that don't go anywhere near there. Yeah, I know, sir. The last time he told me what train to catch, he was dead right. Except for one thing. What was that? It was a goods train. <laughs> This is where you all are, then, old socks. Yes, Lieutenant Commander Staunton. Yeah. We were just discussing our leave. I suppose you're going fishing, as usual. Sir. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I've had fishing for a bit. It's not really done, is it? What is it, sir? Going fishing on your honeymoon, of course. Oh, no, hardly, sir. There's lots of other... <laughs> on your what? Honeymoon, old boots. Uh, just a minute. Are we to understand that you're... Getting married, sir? Yes, so I'm told, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to chat to you chaps about it. It's on Saturday morning, so if you've got a bit of time to spare before you shove off, I'd, uh, I'd like you to pop in and have a butcher's. There's some, uh, there's some grub and wallop laid on afterwards, I believe. <laughs> Do we know the ladies, huh? Oh, I doubt it, old nut. No, no, no. Oh, but I've caught a beauty, though. Oh, oh, I've caught a beauty. Weighs about 135 pounds, and she must be about this long, at least. Oh, yes. <laughs> So all I can say is this is excellent news, but it's uh, certainly a bit unexpected. Yeah, surprise me too, old Watson. Still, my name was on the invitation card, so there can't be a mistake, can there? <laughs> uh, I'll just give the vicar a buzz on the blower and let him know he's working, shall I? <laughs> Help yourself, sir. Oh, good man. Oh, I hate using these blasty things. The time I've dialed the exchange letters, I forget the number. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, is that you, vicar old Bells? Yes, Stanton here. Can you tie the old ball and chain on a Saturday? Oh, 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 good lad. Yeah, what's it? Do I want the organ? Good gracious, no. Oh, no, no, you keep it. We haven't got room for it, over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I thought so too, yes. Saturday it is then. Right, cheerio, old jumble sale. <laughs> well, that's settled, isn't it? And oh, a bit late, uh, just ask him to start without me, will you? Cheerio. <laughs> Before we have a whip round, it seems to me we ought to have some idea of what the present we give the captain and his wife to be is to be. To be. To be. Uh, yeah, well, oh, sir, before you do yourself a mischance. Uh, thank you, Chief. Um, any suggestions? How about you, Lieutenant Bates? Well, sir, I did have one idea, but I'm afraid it's rather short notice. <laughs> what was it? 
Uh, uh, a little invention of mine, old man. Oh, blimey. <laughs> well, I made one for my brother when he got married. It's a sort of magic eye device that opens your front door for you as soon as you get to it. Does your brother like it? Not much, no. <laughs> I must have put the floggle toggle in upside down because it didn't work too well. It held his front door firmly open all day, but the moment he tried to get in, it slammed the thing in his face. <laughs> so, sure, suppose he had to use his key after all, sir. That was the trouble. He did. As soon as he put the key in the lock, there was a blinding flash from the magic eye, and he got 240 volts up his thumb and index. <laughs> oh, nasty. Yeah, wait a minute, sir. I yeah, know. Oh, I think I might be able to help, sir. How about giving the happy couple a blanket or two? No. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, what else then? Uh... Uh, oh, no. Uh, wait a minute. Look, yeah. oh, yeah, look. Uh, how about... Um... <laughs> how about a gallon or two of flat grey paint, sir? <laughs> I mean, you say, you know, he's, uh, he's bound to do his material. He'll be, he'll be decorating some time, isn't he? Yeah, possibly. But no, thank you. No, no, right. Then it's it, some minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, this is it. <laughs> yeah, how about something for the future, Mrs. S. Sing. You know, say, uh, say, uh, say, uh, say, a uh, say, uh, long white tubular shaped shopping bag <laughs> held together at the top with a natty fasten and a white rope intertwined through little brass holes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chief. We are not having a whip round so that we can pay you for issue blankets, admiralty paint, or a kit bag. <laughs> what are we going to give them, sir? I don't know. Of course, in my family, we always give a dinner service. What, the same one? <laughs> yes, quite often, actually. <laughs> Nobody likes it. Did you think crockery's a good idea, sir? When the first plate gets dropped, there'll be a nasty scene. Yes, yes, and if he breaks it, she'll burst into tears. Yeah, bound to, sir, and that'll probably start the first round. Now, wait a minute. A lot of harsh words will be said. And they may even come to blues, now, then. Look here. Which case, she'll throw the first thing that's handy. Which will be the rest of the dinner, sir. The number one <laughs> wants us to give them. Yeah, and the captain isn't going to thank us for giving her the ammunition, either. So that she can take aim. And throw 11 plates and a couple of vegetable dishes. Straighten his mush. <laughs> which will be the end of that marriage. Yes. So why don't we give him a few blankets, a gallon of two of paint, and an opportunity to shopping bag instead? No. Uh. Well, we don't exactly seem to be in agreement, do we, sir? I think the chief's got a point, you know, sir. Instead of giving them one present, perhaps it would be easier if we could give them two. The officers could give them something, and the lower deck could give them something else. Oh, I see. Two smaller presents instead of one big one. Yeah, I second that, sir. Yeah, I rather thought you would. <laughs> However, Chief, there is one thing. Oh, what's that, sir? If the lower deck give them blankets, grey paint, or a novelty tubular shopping bag, you'll get a present yourself. I will, sir? Yes. A well-aimed, flaming great rocket. <laughs> oh, I see. I'll go and have a word with the lads. Yeah, carry on, Chief. Right, That's a good evening. Right, right. We give the captain a wedding present. I'll let you know how much it is shortly. Yeah, I bet you will. I'm not happy. <laughs> I know just what'll happen and I'm not happy. Neither am I, Fatso. It'll work out at 30 bob each for every man on the ship, and at the reception we'll find we've generously given them an empire-made plastic soap dish. <laughs> now, look here, Tuffy Goldstein. Are you suggesting that Chief Billy Officer Pert, we would stoop so low as to make a profit out of this? Of course we're not. We think you're going to make a flaming fortune out of it. <laughs> that's so. That's so. That's not nice. No, no, no. That's not nice at all, that's it. <laughs> I've heard some cut to the quick, Kaya. K-W-I-K, quick. <laughs> Very likely, but I'm not happy. Neither am I. Well, it's nothing new, is it? Why don't you want to contribute to the captain's present, then? Because he never bought me a wedding present, he? You steaming great Welsh goat, of course he didn't. You're not married. Ah. Ah. <laughs> 
Uh, that was his flimsy excuse, too. <laughs> but I know what the real reason was. He's anti-Welsh. Yeah, of course he isn't. Aye, aye, he's off. <clears throat> you wait until we get home, rule, lad. We'll soon have you down to size. Apparently, <laughs> 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 uh, it'd be almost worth it, wouldn't it? <laughs> We'll have our work cut out, I grant you, but we'll whittle him down. Yeah, you're rotten, that's what you are, Taffy. You're rotten. And the Welsh rotten at that. And well, rottens don't come any rotten than Welsh rottens do when you get Welsh rotten. Because rottens aren't usually well. The Welsh are rotten. I've lost myself now. <laughs> and don't worry about that. Once we get home rule, we'll find you. Look, if you've quite finished, Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> Sorry, pardon. Likewise. Right, then. Right. What do we get the captain as a wedding present? Well, in my family, we usually give a dinner service. Isn't it, Martin? <laughs> Isn't it, Martin? Here, yeah, look, I know this much. If ever the pert where he's a push for a bob or two, we're going to start flogging dinner services. No, I'm not happy. I'm not, you know. I'm not. I'm not happy. Oh, will you belt up, you great mountain of misery? You, look, no. I thought we might give him a set of double string. Egg for one, crisply waving blanket. Or a couple of gallons of weatherproof, quick rain, lasting finish, grey paint. <laughs> or possibly a superbly finished, novelty tubular shaped shopping bag in best quality canvas. With a nitty weight fastening for a little brother. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Come out here, you lot, nothing. Walking out like that, what's wrong with them then? Nothing, and I know that for sure. Oh, well. Well, I inspected them all before I signed for them when they were delivered to stores. Now, there's only one answer to this. You petty officers can give him one present, and us downtrodden victims of the service feudal system will give him another. <laughs> that way, we might stay out of the nick and have a couple of bob left in our pockets at the same time. Me, my love, your husband. So, you've decided to come home at last, have you? <laughs> I suppose you've been out with the boys. Oh, yes. Yes, we went to a show, then to a pub, then on to a club where we drank ourselves under... Silence! <laughs> How dare you snap at me like that, you little dictator? <laughs> now, you can come in because there's a lot of work to do. Oh, thank you, my love. You can start by cleaning upstairs first. It's certainly, my love. And this time, Henry, when you get to the bedroom, I'm not standing for any more horseplay with your little feather duster. <laughs> of course not, my love. If I hadn't put a stop to it, you'd have had me ornaments off. <laughs> I'll, I'll be careful, my love. Wait. You haven't told me yet why you were so disgustingly late this evening. Well, it was Lieutenant Commander Stanton, my love. We've had an invitation. Oh, have I? <laughs> no, 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 it's for both of us. Well, we'll see about that. Well, what's this invitation for? He's getting married on Saturday. Oh, the poor girl. She can't, she can't realize what she's doing. Heaven knows I've had enough of it if anyone has. So have I. <laughs> no, you haven't? And don't remind me of our wedding, Henry. It was years before I lived that disgusting little exhibition down. What disgusting? I thought I'd die of shame when I saw you standing there in your father's suit. <laughs> but it was brand new. It was a lovely suit. Possibly. But your father's five foot four and you're six foot one. <laughs> it may have been a shade short. A shade short? I felt as if I was marrying a 35-year-old schoolboy during Bobber Job Week. <laughs> oh, really, Ramona? No, my mind's made up. Sir Willoughby and Lady Todd Hunter-Brown will be there. The Todd Hunter-Browns? In that case, we are going. I was thinking of having a new dress uniform. What? Just because one of your fellow layabouts gets married, there's no need for you to go squander back in. Well, it was only a thought, my love. Well, forget it. If you're a good boy, however, you can have your old dicky pressed. <laughs> Thank you, my love. I would like to look smart. Now, 
What are we going to give them? I thought we'd give them that dreadful dinner service my sister gave us. You know, the one with the great thick plates and the vegetable dishes with the lids that don't fit. <laughs> Do you remember the first time I washed it? Half that ghastly pattern floated off and disappeared down the plug. <laughs> Mind you, it was the best thing. That... <laughs> What's the matter, my love? It wasn't your sister that gave us that dinner service. It was my sister. Oh, oh dear. Whatever we give them, it'll have to be rather obviously better than anything the Todd Hunter Browns give them. I insist upon that. Oh, very well, my love. I'll give up my pocket money for a month to help out. Oh, good boy. Now off you go. And remember, Henry, no more shenanigans, your feather dust around my whatnot. <laughs> Well, I thought the ceremony went off jolly well, didn't you, Mr. Phillips? Oh, rather, sir. I must say, I like the bit when the vicar said, will you take this woman? And the captain said, certainly, old clock tower, where does she want to go? <laughs> oh, yes. And that funny rattling noise when Captain Povey's dicky suddenly rolled up like a shot blind. <laughs> cool. Mr. Phillips, don't look now, uh, but the vicar seems to like his grub, doesn't he? Rather, sir. He hasn't stopped waiting in since we arrived here. Everybody else finished ages ago. I know, sir, but perhaps... What was that, vicar? Oh, certainly. Pass the gravy, somebody. My lord, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Three silence of the first chat. Our dear friend, the woman in Tiddly, Unbelievable. No, 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 Right, settle down, then, settle down. I want to get on with me nattering. Amelia, my love, you got me notes. Certainly, Willa. I was. Oh, thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Six large ginger ales, 14 bottles of scotch, three... Yeah, this can't be right. Oh, sorry, pardon, Willa. That's my shopping list. <laughs> <I are. clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, may I say with all due modesty, and in this day and age, what is needed is just such a plan. Never have I seen. But let us not look on the dark side. <laughs> For who was it once said? And it is in this spirit <laughs> we must search the four corners and in the middle as well. <laughs> I think it only right for me to say that in all the years I have been a registered nurse, uh, a member. <laughs> uh, I cannot remember ever witnessing with such incredibly mixed feelings. <laughs> And, and in asking you to contribute all the old clothes you can spare, <laughs> I know, I know I can rely on one thing, but of course, indirect taxation is another problem altogether. <laughs> Carry the banner high, look left, then right to me, care of Broadcasting Hunt, and in return you will receive a large packet free of charge. <laughs> That's me lot. Well, yeah. said, Willa. Mr. Phillips. Yes, sir. The vicar wants the mustard again. Cool. Where's he putting it all? Well, usually on his plate. <laughs> My lord! <laughs> My lord! Ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Please, sir. Please, Aaron, for, for the next chat. <laughs> Uh-oh, I think the Toastmaster's been toasting on the choir. <laughs> he wouldn't be pert with if he hadn't, sir. Well, let's have a little... Let's, let's have a little harsh now. <clears throat> See, Prylon, for the house. 
Sheep Lalan Stra, Shane and you grew. Lieutenant Commander Stoddard. Where's Stalin? Where was I? Oh, Lord, I'm forgetting. Where are my notes now? Oh, here we are. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, six large ginger ales. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, pardon, Lady B. Old Garters. <laughs> this lot's yours. Not yet, but I have every hope that they soon will be. <laughs> Good luck to you, then, yes, and try not to make a wave. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. Ah, yes, I remember. Having a hot dinner after the do. Now then. Now then, I'd just like to say... What's it? What's it? Oh, certainly, yes, yes. Uh, yes, the vicar's what? The vicar's disgusted. Oh, no, pass the vicar the custard. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yes, all right. <laughs> yes. No, 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 that's all right. You chuck in, old gators. Yes, chuck in. <laughs> I would just like to say how much the old girl and I appreciate the delightful gift of a dinner service given to us by your chaps in the wardroom. I would also like to thank the petty officer's mess for their gift of a dinner service. <laughs> and the ratings for the dinner service they gave us. And we much admired the uh, dinner service given to us by Captain and Mrs. Povey, coupled with the fine dinner service we received from Sir Willoughby and Lady Todd under dinner service. Uh, Todd under dinner service. <laughs> I understand that some of the chaps up at Admiralty are sending us a dinner service. <laughs> it will come in jolly handy. Thank you. <laughs> good heavens. Have a good leave, chap. Have a good leave. Lovely, sir. I've just been working it out. They've got 144 plates, 12 vegetable dishes, and six gravy boats. <laughs> You're right when the vicar calls for a snack, then. <laughs> He's worse than fat, sir. Shh, shh. I think he wants the custard again. What? Uh, oh, certainly, Vicar. Yeah, they're coming over. Hello! <laughs> Lords, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Please, please. Oh. <laughs> Just a minute, Pertwee. <laughs> what was that? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on this auspicious day, I thought you might like me to read you a little poem. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. A little poem I have entitled... Henry! Uh, yes, my love. No smut. <laughs> of course not, my love. No. Good boy. This is no time for all that old guff about Dan, Dan, the whatever it was. <laughs> no, 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 my love. No. <clears throat> a, a short poem entitled The Captain and His Lady by <laughs> Henry Povey. <clears throat> Verse one. Mr. Phillips, chief, sir. he's got to be stopped. Leave it, leave it to me, sir. I'll just get to the old Joanna and we'll have the ship square. Well, that could be worse. <laughs> and side by side in life's late November, with faces so wrinkled and tired, the captain and his oh, lady... Oh, it's lovely. That's <laughs> lovely reading. Abbas is beautiful, sir. Lovely, brother. Perch, no, no. wait, I haven't finished. Yes, you will have. No. <laughs> Great lads, from the top. One, two. A Stratbridge, a ship so loyal and true. Stratbridge, sends all the best to you. Stratbridge, did you say Trabridge? Yes, I said Trabridge. And Trabridge to you. Trabridge. <laughs> Uh, what was that? Sounded ominously like Uncle Ebenezer. Yes, it was that. He's taking the bride and the groom to the station in his luxurious limousine. Well, cheerio, you chaps. Have a good leave. Oh, my dear old son. I tell Well, sir, I suppose we may as well make for the station ourselves, hmm? Yes, we haven't got much time left for our trains, trains girls. Right, you, you carry on. I'll catch you up as soon as I've checked up. Everything is in order here. My train's the last one to go. I asked. <laughs> oh, no, no, they, that's all right, Vicar. You carry on. <laughs> The cake's just behind you. Lock up when you've finished, will you? Young Paul 
Uh, tickets, please. Oh, certainly. Uh, you'll you'll uh, you'll find the others over there, sir. What? I thought their trains would have gone by now. <laughs> they have, sir. Hours ago. And so is yours. Mr. Phillips, what have you done? Oh, hello, sir. <laughs> I'll tell you what he's done, sir. My train don't go on Saturday. <laughs> and mine only goes on race days. And mine goes through here at 85 miles an hour. <laughs> And what about yours, Heather? Oh, it was a cheap day excursion in June, which doesn't leave from here anyway. Brilliant. And mine left hours ago. Mr. Phillips, you're a genius. Well, fair's fair, sir. My train was fish only. <laughs> if I'd been here, I'd have put you on it. When are the next trains, Chief? In one short word, sir. Tomorrow morning. I see. Now, if we can get a taxi back to the dockyard. Oh, yes, I thought we would. Well, well, well. Uh, well, fancy that, sir. What a bit of luck. How much, Nanky? Well, seeing it's after the usual time and there isn't anything else available and you've all been paid, a quid each. <laughs> I'm too tired to argue. Pile in, everybody. Hand him a pound, everyone. We'll sue him later. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah, right, 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 right. All right, breathe in, that's so. I am. Well, breathe out, then. <sighs> There's a good lad. The door's shut. <laughs> right, off we go, Nanky. Everybody's in. <laughs> now what? You'll all have to get behind and push. Oh, a pound each, and it won't even start. All right, come on, out we get. We're all together with a jolly Eve urgent, please. Oh, come on now. Here, come back, come back. Hey, come back. hey, 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 Wait till I get my hands on him. I'll do him a grievous mischief as I'll do a Save your breath, Chief. We'll just have to walk it. I'm not happy about that. I'm not, you know, I'm not happy. Ah, come on, that's so. First 50 miles are the worst. Yeah, if you step it out a bit, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll buy you a pint in the naffy. I can't afford it. No, no. I mean it. Think of it, that's so. A nice foaming pint when you get to the other end. All right? Lift. Right, lift, right. Trap bridge. A ship so loyal and true. Trap bridge. Send all the best to you. Trap bridge. Did you say trap bridge? Yes, we said trap bridge and trap bridge. Trap bridge. That was John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips and Stephen Murray working their passage in the last of the current series of The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one. Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Mrs. Povey was Heather Chasen, Lieutenant Commander Stanton was Ronnie Barker, Lieutenant Bates was Michael Bates, and Sir Willoughby Todd Hunter Brown was played by Tenniel Evans. Incidental music for the series was by Tommy Riley and James Moody. The announcer was Robin Boyle, and the recorded production was by Alastair Scott Johnston. <laughs>